All right, let's try. A lot of people want to see Asenia, so we're going to do that. I'll throw an Iron Man mode. We'll get some achievements and uh, go. And yep, yeah, boom, start. Done. The Scottish route is like, yeah, this is going to be hard enough as is. Hey, it's whiskey and chocolate coming in. Okay. Thanks, Gage. For three stars. Thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. I want Cornovia, though. So uh, right away, let's take a look at the decisions that we can implement as Icenia over here. So we are a settled tribe, right? Yes. Okay. Um, we could abandon the sedentary lifestyle and become migratory, but we wouldn't do that. So we can become an autocratic monarchy, a democratic republic. We can unite Albion. Oh, look at that. Yes. And then, oh, Britannia. So, Britannia is just effectively England. Now, I don't know. I, this is the first time I've run into the phrase Britannia. Well, no, technically it was like five minutes ago in the, uh, in the chat. I'd never heard the word Brit Britannia before. But Albion over here, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, and Wales. Yes, you're right. Always forget about Wales. Poor Wales. Get no attention, no love. Okay, so uniting stuff would be kind of cool. Let's take a look at our, our current situation. So we are Icenia, we're a settled tribe. Our ruler currently is Senatus Marganus. So that is his, uh, the Marganus family. We'll take a look actually at our characters and organize it by family here. So the Margani, that's who we currently are over there. Uh, the Oxy, Okani, Bolgi, and Senati. Now, Everyone seems to be fairly okay, fairly chill. All right, unite Albion against the Elven threat. Sounds good to me. Uh, first thing we're gonna do in our nation overview, we're gonna go and assign our um, national, uh, national ideas. Because as soon as we assign these, we get plus one of every power every month. So it seems a very high value. With our current government, we need one military idea, one oratory idea to unlock the bonus here. You can pick any idea, but you're gonna probably wanna match it up. Military wise, the ones we have unlocked is 10% more morale of armies. Super sick good. Permanent shipyards, cheaper triremes. I mean, we're going to want to do naval stuff at some point, presumably, but I think we're really going to be focused on, on conquering Britain, right? So I'm not sure that the boats are useful right now. And then reinforcement speed and army morale recovery. These are both really strong. It's infinite G! This is a chocolate donation. Please do not buy a $10 whiskey. <laughs> a $10 whiskey would be, well, probably really small. I was gonna say really poor, but probably really small. I think we'll just go for higher morale of armies. I think I like that idea. And then we wanna pick an oratory idea, ideally. Uh, monthly corruption decreases, more general and army loyalty, or improved opinion maximum. Now, once we become a great or a, a sort of regional power or something because i think we're just a local power or something like we're really low on the totem pole um so we can't really you know we can't have vassals or anything i don't think at this point but if we grow we could do that and then having the improved ma uh, uh, opinion maximum would be pretty handy but i'm wondering if the general and admiral loyalty might be more valuable right now what is what do you guys think oh my god we got some gift subs coming in from yelver's ton of fun thank you very much yelver Five gift subs dropping in. That's awesome. Remember, you need oratory power to do trade stuff. Yeah, but I mean, I, I want to I wanna get these two ideas as soon as possible. So the idea is, you know, you can be swapped. It costs 50 um, um, oratory power to implement one of these ideas. You could switch it later for another 50 if you want. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go for the loyalty. So we've activated this, so we get more civilization level and we're getting one extra monarch power of every type every month. So that's really good. Uh, we only have one province, single province Visenia. We are the governor of that province currently. Our government, we do have three ch clan chiefs. Of course, we're fully loyal to ourselves. Uh, and then we've got Ricca and Brennus over here at 75%, but not too shabby. Um, hopefully we can keep them going on. Our centralization, our current people, we can switch our laws if we want to spend more oratory power here, but it's very expensive right now and I think we can do much better things um, with it otherwise. We currently have a bad research, research ratio because we don't have very many um, um, citizens. All right, so we have one province over here. 
and each province has numerous cities in it. And there's four different types of pops. There's slaves, tribesmen, freemen, and citizens. Citizens are the ones that are responsible for your research. And we have very few. I think there's a place. Oh yeah, right here. So we have two citizens, nine freemen, 24 tribesmen, no slaves. So we may want to do something uh, somewhere along the way. We can promote people up to citizens. Citizens aren't too happy if the cities aren't very civilized. I think I'm going to have to move my head somewhere like that. Um, like, if we take a look at this citizen here, 62% uh, is not bad. Local autonomy, civilization value. Maybe we just go and pump the citizenship up. Anyway, we've got a uh, unused trade route in our capital, so we're going to import some goods from somewhere else. I do really like importing grain for growth. It's whiskey and chocolate. What do we have currently? Oh, it's whiskey and chocolate from Dream X Theater 2. Hey, you started playing Dwarf Fortress after your Golden Halls run on YouTube. Oh, do you have any idea why my dwarves won't attack with weapons? Oh, they're mostly doing wrestling stuff? Well, I mean, in squads by default, they should be assigned to pick up weapons. You might have to make sure your squads have activated at some point properly so that they equip themselves. I'm not sure. That's a tough one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I should change the, uh, the stream title because we're not actually playing as Kush. That is right. I'll just change it to Rule Britannia. Yeah, I'm just... Okay, so yes, what we have... We have salt. So we're very salty, which gives us fort defense, and who cares? Although we do get an army maintenance cost decrease. That's fine. We have earthenware, so we get research points. We have wood, so we can build triremes. We have fur. In fact, we have an excess of fur. Uh, so we have a lot of starting experience from our troops, and we have some iron, which means we can build heavy infantry, which is great. I'm not sure if all our neighbors will be able to do that or not. Now, we could boost some happiness of various people. Uh, we already have wood for trireme, and we don't care about more trireme um, resistance. Um, hemp? Hey, hey, if we're playing as Kush, man, um, we don't have slaves, so the slave output doesn't matter. Leather for recruitment, and you can make your infantry and stuff better. I think I'm just going to go for grain. I really like the population growth, and it can give us some a manpower as well if we get more. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll import it from whomever. Yeah, it does cost the power to do that. Uh, lack of commander. So we have, we have two armies. Oh, is it the navy? We have a navy built that doesn't have a commander. Oh. Well, all right, I'll assign a commander just to get rid of the note. I'm wondering if we should just trash the navy, though. Like, we're just maintaining some, some ships for no real reason. We can afford an invention. So it costs us 100, um, what is this, civic power to unlock these inventions. I'm kind of keen. I think we're going to do some warfare early on. Now, it's going to be hard. These guys will create tons and tons of little defensive packs. Um, and I don't know how many people we can really jump on. We only have so many neighbors here. We might be able to jump on these guys to the south. I would really like to expand early on. So I'm just wondering if we take the discount to fabricating claim costs. I think I'm going to do that. And we can get an omen over here as well. We're not going to bother getting the omen for boosting research points right now because we don't produce enough to be worthwhile. I'm tempted to get some population growth just to try to kickstart our economy. But if we are going to war super early, we might just want to get the discipline boost. Mm hmm. Or just, you know, money. I'm going to get the population growth. I think it's just really, really, really nice early on. And yeah, you're right. We can use this to do maybe some coastal sieges or something. We'll see. Especially if we're going south to these guys. Um, they have seven cohorts. We have nine. So we're currently slightly stronger, which is good. Um, skirmishing is... Is there a way to find out? There we go. Skirmishing. Do we have heavy infantry. No, it's just a zero. So it's a good strat for these guys. I'm very curious, once this game is released, so you can pick these different tactics and different types of units do better than others. 
I'm, I'm really looking forward to people ripping apart the game and the mechanics and min-maxing stuff to figure out like how to how to organize your troops. So skirmish is quite good if you're doing light infantry and archers, but heavy infantry don't really benefit from skirmish. I'm wondering about a separate army that's just heavy infantry. Um, oh, that's heavy cavalry. What do I want? Is it warriors? Oh yeah, warriors are a heavy, um, heavy infantry. They're very expensive but they're powerful. I'll start training one up and maybe make a separate army. The reason to have separate armies is because then it reduces the chance that your one of your generals becomes all uppity because he's got like all the troops on his backing. We'll see. Um, if we want to declare war to the south, I mean, first we'd have to fabricate the claim. The thing is we did just spend our oratory power, so we can't do it right now. We could have not spent the oratory power and therefore not put in our national ideas, but I think that would have been bad. can't merge those armies because they're personal armies of the clan and that's the other thing too which is kind of cool because the the clan armies which is these two so i don't have my own army these are just clan armies you're right so i couldn't have built um troops these guys are loyal to the two other clans in our territory so uh brennis and Rika over here so they are leading their personal armies they don't use my own manpower so now i'm going to build um troops out of my own manpower and it's going to be great Check, yeah, I know, we'll be checking the allies of our target as well, but it's going to be a little while before we actually start a war. It's Cyclovex! So, we're being invited to a defensive league. I'm going to accept these, and what's going to happen is we're going to see how um, uh, these relationships shake out. So we have a defensive pact over here. We'll bring up the speed to maybe four over there, and we'll see what develops. Um, I need to bring up uh, the dashboard. Alliance offer. Yes, all right. So we have a military alliance, so we have some who could join in on a war with us, which is very nice. So we're waiting for 180 oratory power to basically pull the trigger. At that point, the uh, various alliances will have sh shaken out, and we'll see what happens. Um, this is ourselves. We will lead this army. We've got enough martial skill. We're a great leader of this army. And what's nice about this is we don't have to worry about um, if these troops become loyal to me then that's going to be fine. Okay. Now, we got to make sure not to overspend, and we will start running a deficit at this at some point, but I'll get a couple more warriors. Now, the you can see here the heavy infantry really like the bottleneck strategy. The 100% effectiveness from bottlenecks uh, from heavy infantry, and actually archers are pretty happy with it too, so I'll probably frontline some, some infantry, some heavy infantry, and put some archers behind them. Uh, we can get another invention. We may as well. I don't see there's any reason to delay these. Just keep spending the um, uh, the civic power, because we don't really spend the civic power on more and many things other than inventions. Starting experience, maybe we'll get that now while we're recruiting cheap troops. It seems like it's going to be fairly relevant. Uh, Cyclovex, what did you say, Cyclovex? A lovely stream to make this useless workday go by fast. You're working together today, Cyclovex? You don't have this Friday off? Damn, I'm so sorry. I'm so hyped for this game more than any other Paradox game. I remember in a long time. Have a great holiday with your family. Cool. Thank you very much, Cyclovex. I will be spending the weekend with my family. There will be a stream tomorrow, though. Bottleneck is bad versus skirmish, and that is what you will probably face since most just have archers in light. That is true. Good point. Alliance offer, oh, from these guys. Well, we could consider that and then just go directly west. They are in a bunch of alliances as well. Right now, they're in a defensive league. Maybe I'll say no to these guys. go with shock it's bad against battle uh, bottleneck and phalanx but otherwise it's fine oh yeah increases casualties oh my tribal chief gets jealous um and shock is bad with these troops though so pure heavy infantry is a good shock one and cavalry maybe defensive leagues are changing up what are we at? 148. Let me know when we hit 180, then that's going to be sort of go time. Uh, we'll, we'll have to take a big evaluation of what the political situation is and then pick a target. Um, people want to import some things. 
This will earn us money. I mean, I, I don't see any reason why I'd say no to... I'm going to cancel this one just because I think it's for the same the same resource. Mostly I'm going to export things. It's going to be fine. So this is our defensive league over here. Oh, defensive league weakens. But here we've got an alliance. Having the ally is going to be really, really great stuff. Okay, we're almost... I think we only have to wait one more month. Oh, no, plus six. So two more months. Minister of Excellent. Who this? As a fine display of financial acumen makes significant alterations in the national budget, we should expect to see much better revenue this year. Either 10% more tax, or we can let her keep the money. She gain a bunch of personal money and then gain some loyalty. I'm just going to raise the national taxes. That's going to be all right. Um, you know, yeah, we'll... Uh, I'm just going to get a couple more heavy warriors over here and call that good enough. Yeah, she's loyal enough. Mixed CK2 and EU4. Not only that, they also mixed in a little bit of, um, of Victoria. All right, we got our pops in our various cities over here. So this is Iceni culture, Druidic religion, 56% happiness, this pop. And it might be make more sense if we look at a group of more. I mean, right now we've got a pretty homogenous country, but that will change as we conquer a little bit more territory over here. All right, there's our 180. So our neighbors to the south. They have a defensive pact with Dubonia, which is over here and quite large. So Dubonia have 11 cohorts. Isenia has eight, so that's a total of 19. We are going to be getting up to 14, which is what we're building. We could build a little more. We do have an ally. So the question is though, is would they join in? Conflicting interests? I mean, maybe. I'm gonna go ahead and fabricate a claim on the people to myself. So. We've got a fabricated claim on a province. I'm going to fabricate on the province of Icenia, because first of all, that sounds like something I should have more of. It's also got 17 pops, so it's their larger province. So we have a claim. We'll have to wait before we can actually declare the war. I don't know if we have enough money to keep pumping up our troops any more than this. Yeah, there's no tutorial for this I, on my channel yet. Mostly because I haven't, you know, I wouldn't feel uh, confident enough to do it. I mean, I could do a very basic tutorial, but that would be the, about the extent of it. Are you seriously getting attrition? Wow, yeah, it's got a supply limit of seven. Holy cow. Okay. All right, so if we declared war, see our allies wouldn't want to jump in because conflicting interests and lack borders. Now, what we could also consider has border. Hmm. We'll wait a little bit because we don't want to go and suicide ourselves. Have infantry take more? Yeah, because they well they clearly have more weight. I don't know if we can start the war right now. Unfortunately, we're losing money now. I'm watching you on Steam Live, you're playing Tropical Six. I know they keep <laughs> different 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 values of live, but yeah, the uh, the Tropical Channel is replaying my stream. Uh, which is fine. I gave them permission for that, but it is a little funny. Um, no longer in our defensive league. I need this defensive league to break down. I really like playing this game in um, in diplomacy map mode because I don't really know the country names that well, so it's a lot easier to keep track of things. I guess we can get a new invention. Uh, we probably just need more money. Make sure we can fund our armies. So we'll run that. More whiskey and chocolate. Who dis? It's Kellum Cheney. Hey, this is, may have already been mentioned in chat, but Brittany is an old name for Celtic Britons. So this may be why it's called Britannia. Ah, maybe if you were forming it as Rome, it would be Britannia. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's cultural naming convention or something. Uh, all right. Oh, tribal champion, Rika, over here. So one of our clan chiefs is an impressive clan chief known for her battle prowess and strength. After an extraordinary feat of defending her clan from a pack of wolves, the people around Rika have demanded to give her the honor of champion of Icenia. Icenia? Icenia? Sure, I guess we're going to go with hard seas. We'll commit to it. Surely the clan chiefs deserve the honor, but she is already a known figure and it would give her more leverage politically. How could we refuse? So I would. it would cost me oratory power. It would give her loyalty and prominence. Her prominence is already capped out, so that doesn't matter. Uh, which is good, because higher prominence is bad for not you. Um, the higher loyalty is good. Um, or no plans yet, so we could trash loyalty. I think I'm going to say, how could we refuse? No hard seats, Icenia. All right, Icenia. It's hard because, like, there's the Celtic versus Celtic thing. And, you know, um, 
so and and is Icenia, you know, is that the Roman name for this area? Therefore, do you pronounce it in a more Latin way? How do you how do you go about things? Um, local power. Oh, these guys want to ally with me. The problem is, I really want to declare war on you. I think we have to raise our opinion with Corinthia so they actually attack. If it was Latin, it would be Icania. Latin has a hard C, and that's what that's what I figured, right? And I suspect that the spelling of this is the Latin spelling by the Romans, and they would pronounce it Icania. But if people pronounce it Icenia, then you know we'll go with that. So it's one of those things. It's it's not. Neither one will be wrong. There might be one that's more appropriate depending on the setting, but. Uh, I'm going to decline again. I really want to get some wars, you know? We're not doing a pacifist run. We're still losing money right now. Should we just go for it? You know what? Maybe we should. What could possibly go on? Hey, if it goes badly, we can just restart, right, guys? Exactly. Let's do this. We're going to move our troops. We're just going to be ready to land on these guys instantly. Instantly. Declare war. They're not, they're not in defensive pact anymore. When did that happen? Go! Oh shit, okay. When did that happen? Uh oh, Quill's got the war cravings again. Oh, there's a family feud. Two of our tribesmen came forward today to ask for help settling ownership over a gold goblet they found. Um, Allah believes it belongs to her. She was the one to find it. Whereas Rika says it belongs to her as it was discovered in her lands. So... Ooh, belongs to Icenia. We would get tyranny, but a hundred gold. And also trash both their loyalty. It belongs to the gods. We'd get religious power. They would lose less loyalty. I'm tempted to actually give it to Rika. Um, to, because she is a clan chief and I want to keep her loyalty high. Yeah, I was going to say, can't you just force them to split it? That's what I was thinking. I was like going to go full Solomon on this. A lot of people want money. All right, belongs to Icenia. What's a little tyranny? We need the money to fund our war. Okay, let's bring the speed down a little bit here. Um, and at this point, what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm just gonna tell all my troops, here, go independent operations. So they're gonna spread out and carpet sieges for me. This got claimed for us automatically because we have a fort here. That's something you don't see in like an EU4 or any of the other games, but forts claim adjacent territory, even if it's hostile in this, which is really potent. Tyranny is son is a synonym for leadership. There you go. So yeah, I have got my, my dudes on independent operations. They're just going to do their own thing. You can see there are automated armies over here. Because why would I want to micro this part? It's like, great. They'll hunt things down. They'll siege things down. There's a bunch of automated behaviors you can give them, right? Defend your borders, fight rebels, reconnaissance. So a little army that moves fast. Ooh call allies. Oh, we could call in our ally, but why bother? Following alliances or leagues. These guys want to leave the alliance. Okay, I'm going to call them in before um, before they leave. Not that I need them in here, but I'm hoping it'll improve our relations because we'll have fought a war together. Tyranny being a synonym for leadership explains so much about politics these days. Yeah. Okay, I might I might want to manually do these guys because they do they they are moving around maybe a little bit more than I would like. Siege this down. What I can do is maybe put a couple on border defense so they'll go and bop these guys if they're trying to do anything annoying to me. Good evening, Mr. Start. Who are we? We are Icenia. We're ma gonna make. Britain great again. Or we're going to make Britain Great Britain for the first time is what's going to happen. Make Britain Great Britain. Heavies are bad at siege as they take more attrition. So, okay, how do people... Oh, attrition rate... Well, okay. They have more weight. I don't think they take more attrition. I think they're more likely to take attrition because they have more weight. But here we have a supply limit of 11. And the weight is seven. 
Now, we need 5,000 dudes to be able to siege this, so we would have to move some more guys onto this, which I guess we will do. More weight, more thick. <laughs> Um, I'm wondering if we grab some of this, like, Diplo rep stuff. I think later on we're going to want this for sure. Technology speed. We're going to want all these things. Actually, the Omen power is going to be kind of nice. We will unlock all these fairly quickly, so it's going to be okay. There we go. So now I, I will move you, and I will take the heavies out of here. Just because the two stacks of non-heavies probably... I mean, you're still going to get one point of attrition because you're sieging. But the heavies would have put this over the supply limit, and now they won't. So I'll let my allies burn their manpower on these goobers or something like that. Maybe I'll move the heavies to here. Um, oh, although the fort movement rules are going to make that a little difficult. This is a capital of a province. You do have to hold the capital of the province to be able to claim it in peace. Yeah, if they want to try to attack me here. There we go. My allies are going to jump in. You can go and be independent. Do whatever you want, which is going to be fine. So we'll just have to wait for this siege to finish. Oh, I should probably move my triremes out here because I'm willing to bet we have... I don't see like a minus two for being on the coast. Maybe that's not something in this game as opposed to Eeyore? E -E 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 there, blockade. This is a port. Oh, it's not a port. It's on the coast, but it doesn't actually have a port, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, if it has lighthouse. Yeah, so these don't matter. We can go and dock you back in here. Yeah, this little lighthouse icon. Um, there you go. Siege 1. We control the province. Rika, who is leading the siege, gained some popularity. And we captured a pop as a slave. And a pop died. So we have slaves somewhere. We didn't have it before. There you go. We got 100% siege on these guys. Let's go ahead and super peace. We're going to take both your provinces and um, all of your gold. There you go. Chomp. All right, guys. Now, what do we do with the Trinovantian elite? We have captured them. We can say our enemies deserve no quarters. Every character in Trinovantia will be put to death before the cheering crowds of Venta, which would gain us, the chief, popularity. We're not very popular right now. We could banish them and put the rest of the sword, which would lose some aggressive expansion. We could imprison their leaders, let the rest disappear. So they would be in prison. We would lose popularity. And then when they're in prison, we could do various things with them. Um, or we could pass judgment on important families. We'd choose individually. Um, banish to lower AE or enemies deserve no quarters. Really are the two ones. You need popularity. I agree. 26 popularity is terrible. They deserve no quarter. Done. Okay, so our country has just gotten bigger over here. We can switch back to maybe political map mode for a second and see how things are going. That's good. We now have more than one province. So we have our province of Icenia, which is now bigger because some of Icenian's cities belong to the people we just crushed. Um, in fact, it's possible that we have the entire province now. Yeah, the entire province of Icenia lies within the borders of Icenia. I think that's appropriate. Now, Cantiasia. Cantiasia? I don't know, this place. Um, we only are, own a, a slight sliver of it. Uh, they're not terribly loyal right now, and actually their loyalty is dropping currently. These cities are not terribly happy because, you know, they've just been conquered, I suppose. Let's take a look at the... Uh... Oh, their happiness is okay. Oh! The citizens over here are definitely not. Oh, they're not my... Um... They're not my culture. They're Trinovantian as opposed to Icenian or Iceni. So we may have to, um, we may have to assimilate you. Resistance is futile. I, th I think it's probably worth assimilate assimilating at this point. There is a chance of assimilating people every month. Um, right here, cultural assimilation, 27% chance every month that one pop will convert. Now, um, assimilating does cost us points. So we may not want to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to position my troops in all three of these provinces. Oh. Can I not control this army? Oh, it's already moving. Duh. That's why. 
Yeah, 27% will get it done real quick for free. And that's that's what I was just thinking. I think it's probably worth just waiting. Once we get to 180 oratory power again, we could go and fabricate another claim. Perhaps on these guys down here. They do have a defensive league with a couple of people, though. So we'll have to take a look at our numbers. Um, trade access, allied, same religion, different culture. Overall, they're going to like us okay. One of the things is aggressive expansion works fairly differently in this game. Um, while it does affect how people like you externally, it has a big impact on people inside. One of the reasons these people are so cranky is because of aggressive expansion. Well, okay, it's not that much. It's only 2.4%. But, yeah, your people internally gets pretty pissed. Uh, Kantiasa, which is the people I might consider attacking next, won an alliance. The thing is, I'm not necessarily opposed to that because we can always go after Dubonia who are, who do have a couple of alliances currently in a war. We could decide to go west. I think what I'll do is I will go ahead and accept this alliance because we'll see if we can take like a big chunk out of these guys and we can one of the biggest powers in the area. Uh, you guys want to purchase some of my earthenware pottery? Sure, that's going to be okay. We could still use the money. Okay. Why is the date in game incorrect? So the date in game, this is, um, so currently in, in our current reckoning is the year 300 BC. This is the date from the founding of Rome. It's how many years Rome has been founded. But if you mouse over, you can see in your, uh, in, in, you know, what we're used to. Okay. Trade income would be good. Tribes and output. Like, these are all good. All these inventions are quite nice. We want about the tech stuff at some point. I'm wondering about the Diplo rep. Maybe we can build some things. Can you switch the standard date and settings? I'm actually not sure if you can. That's a great question. Let's increase the refraction quality. I don't know how, how relevant that's going to be to our gameplay. Mm -hmm. Something some, some the USA would do. The world started in 1700s. Nice. All right. Let's unpause. Let's leave it on speed four. So we need our armies to recover, which is fine. We have manpower. Traders leave our defensive league. Eh, that's fine. Um, Brigantia. All right, more trade league stuff. But yeah, we still have our alliances. So we actually have... Oh, no, we have a big defensive league. So people keep popping in and out of defensive league, which is fine. Take a look at diplomacy map mode again. I really like spending time in here because it really gives you an idea of what you're doing. So like... Let's go ahead and fabricate a claim on these guys. Um, there we go, because this is the province of Demonia over here, I think. There's already a thousand year timeline mod for Imperator, actually. Wow. Well, and that's the thing. The Paradox games are so goddamn moddable. And this one is even more moddable than any of the previous Paradox games. There's so much crazy stuff that I saw um, at the um, at the, the 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 press event for Imperator like months ago, for like built-in like GUI editor in the game to like make your own dialogue boxes and customize everything in a way that's never existed before. It's so freaking nice and easy to make changes. Um, full map editors as well and things like that. This is going to be the most moddable of all the Paradox games. The, the stuff people are going to be able to do from this. You won't even recognize it as Rome anymore. Okay, so if we were to declare on war on you, I would say that would be bad. Because my, my allies would go and defend over here. All right, all right, all right. Do, 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 do. In before someone ports CK2 or you foreign to Imperator. <laughs> Yeah, see, because starting BC would be weird because, yeah, you have this decreasing number and we don't know about this Christ guy yet. Like, can you imagine the Romans are going around talking about, like, you know, it's the year 299 before Christ. It's like, wait, what? Sure, you can have military access. That's fine. Mm 
Okay, I mean, we can just kill, chill for now. One of the things in this game, the manpower recharges very slowly. Oh, we have a scandal at court between a couple of people. None of our business. We would lose popularity. I don't want that. We don't tolerate public infidelity. Brennus would lose prominence and lose his position in government or just have him flogged. Well, let's just have him flogged. I'm always, I'm always down for a good flogging. Plus, our high priest will gain some loyalty. Boom. Chad is saying flog. There you go. Yeah, yeah, you can buy my earthenware pottery. That's going to be okay. We have a lot of money. I think what we should probably do is build some buildings. And the other thing we can do, and we probably want to do at some point, is consider promoting our pops. I often like to focus on that in the, the capital because it's kind of fun. But, like, maybe if we got more citizens to improve our research ratio. It's tough because, like, our freemen produce manpower. And our tribesmen, well, money and manpower. Slaves is where we make the most of the money. Yeah, BC is before Common Era. That's what we call it now. It used to just be BC for before Christ, but now it's like BCE because it's like let's not let's not just base things on Christ. Plus, Christ was probably born like like two BC or two AD or something like that. Like people have figured out that it was we're probably like off a slight bit, something like that. About four BC. There you go. Thank you very much, Compside Jedi. Because it's like one of those weird things where it's like, well, actually. So yeah, do we promote these pops? Do we build buildings? I'm, I'm kind of tempted to have granaries everywhere because granaries do boost our growth. Although it's also slave happiness, right? Uh, fortresses, eh. Manpower, eh. And then the marketplace gives us taxes, income, and civilization level, which will make our um, citizens happier. I'm actually thinking about just marketplacing everywhere. Money is power, right? Money is power. Civilization is good. And this that's got a little plus here because this is the pop that's growing right now. We'll see. So these guys, man. All right, that's no good. Oh, we could change some of these. The purple places are people that we're um, trading with, which isn't so much. There we go. We could, um, if we can get a CB, and I think we can get a CB over here, we can war with these guys, and that'd be fairly okay. So I think what we'll do is do that. Is Stonehenge represented in this game? That's a good question. Which reminds me, I have to play Crusader Kings again, because they added um, all sorts of cool things with like buildable wonders and whatnot. Oh yeah, when you're a major power, you can threaten people. Oh, there's someone else we're trading with. But um, there is a province, I think it's the province of Man, M-A-A-N in CK2, that has the Petra. And I've never played an Islamic uh, character in CK2. So that would be really fun. So we could be like the guardians of Petra. And that would be kind of epic. Uh, oh, Cult of Arms. From these guys. Well, that's... Oh, you're having a civil war. Well, you know what? I will accept, because this should be a fairly easy battle. And um, it'll make sure you like me a lot. Yeah, the Civil War is pretty irrelevant. It's pretty irrelevant. I want to do something cool, like get, like, camel cavalry or elephants or something at some point in this playthrough. Where are you going? Over here? You know what? I'll just siege out your spot here. You're annoying. So many civil wars in this game. Yeah. Okay. Just be independent. Do your own thing. I don't want to micromanage you in this. This is an irrelevant war. There are no elephants. I really wanted the elephants. Game of Thrones? Anyone? Yes? We wanted some elephants? For sure. We're going to keep the... Uh, we're going we're gonna to avoid the spoilers, but... Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I know I want the tech speed, but again, right now, it's not going to do much for us. So I think I'm going to keep focusing on things that boost our economy a little. Because I think we'll appreciate having that. So disappointed by the lack of elephants. I know, right? Ever-changing council. Rika made a lot of friends in the court, proven much of a boon, opening door to a larger audience. So what could we do? We could instant... Oh! This would let us change a law. Now, Okay. We should talk about our laws over here. So normally changing a law takes 250 oratory power. This would let us do it for 100, although this is also what we need to like, you know, claim land. 
this would change our right here our council law from expanded council which lets me have a friend but decreases the loyalty so these guys are all sitting on Are they all sitting on minus 20 loyalty right now? Or is it just if I were changing to it, they would lose loyalty? Because I don't see... I mean, I see Insular Clans, but that's over here. Insular Clans, their max loyalty is reduced by 20. So this just changes to open hearings. I guess changing the laws normally... Yeah, okay. Changing all these laws costs some loyalty. I see. Literally all of them. Interesting. But open hearings would give us an extra clan chief. So if I do it this way, though, it looks like, first of all, it's going to be cheap, only 100 oratory power. It's not going to cost loyalty. And in fact, Rika is going to gain loyalty. So our maximum friends goes down, but we have an extra clan chief. Now that can be tricky because there's going to be more people to keep happy, but that's going to be more people raising troops from their own manpower pool. I think we're going to go for it. Or we could say no and just piss her off. No, let's do it, man. Boom. Open hearings. Wow, you are cranky. Maybe you did lose it. I would like it if I could make you a little happier. 36 happiness is not much, and it's still dropping. Yeah, you have a lot of loyal cohorts. What we need to do is we need to make sure we have a bunch of cohorts that aren't loyal to these clan chiefs to try to balance that out. So in practice, it means I need like more troops. What I, I probably will do is build another warband. So many sub gifts, I know. Be nice if when there was a sub gift, it sort of listed it like at the same time instead of doing um, multiple little pop ups. It would be very cool. But Corianus, thank you very much for the gift subs to the channel, bringing you to a total of 10. Big supporter. Thank you very much, Corianus. And oh, that was actually five gifts um, back to back. Oh, I see. So it was 10 gifts today. That's amazing. So congratulations, congrats to everyone who's getting the free subs. Well, I can't hear your spoilers. So disappointed by lack of elephants. Yeah, so everyone has been spoiled. Elephants. Are, uh, gift subs are, you can gift subs to someone um, directly, but you can also give it at random, which I think what's happening here. So anyway, that civil war is gonna shake itself out at some point. We got our troops on autopilot, because who cares? Um, there's our new clan chief over here. So there she is, currently very loyal, nice. And yeah, she's building up her own retinue over here which is nice to see. Sure, you can have military access. Looks like these rebels are gonna get stomped out. So yeah, we answered the call to arm, so I'm hoping these guys are gonna be super turbo loyal. We're gonna have to save up our oratory power again to um, to fabricate. I mean, we could just declare war without a CB. No CB is best CB, right? We'd lose two stability. We'd have to use religious power to boost our stability again, but I don't know, that's okay. What do you think about Imperator so far? It's still so early to say. Um. I th well, I mean, I think the base of it is really good. It's one of these super promising in so many different ways. I suspect that, you know, just and this is the case for all strategy games from any of the paradox ones to civilization to whatever. It's going to be one of these things where it's like, I mean, it's fine as is. Let, and then let, let, let paradox like develop a few more, like, you know, a couple of patches. Um, and, uh, you know, some mods and things to go in. It's going to be one of these glorious games. It's going to be, I think it's going to feel a lot like Stellaris. Stellaris at release was pretty cool. But after you play for a while, you're like, you know, it's it's got this sort of, you know, sort of a, maybe a slow mid game or this or that or whatever. And then they just like, they're like, okay, I see. And then they just keep hammering at those problems. Um, and uh, I think it'll be very much like that. I think, I think Imperator is going to be good at release but it'll probably be like okay and now what after you've played a couple of games and then the and now what will be responded to by more patches and expansions and mods and crazy stuff i know there's some people are not happy with stellaris as of 2.2 i personally like it but i can see why you might not like it i like the population changes i think it still needs some more stuff and they are working on it they're doing a big sector redo um, espionage is going to come at some point, they keep talking about, which is cool. Um, unrest, national taxes, I mean, money's okay right now. We could just boost our manpower, which is, might be a good idea because we're consuming some right now. Let's do that. I wonder if I should manage my troops. 
Oh yeah, and this army is still controlled right now. Although, you know, it's still growing, so I will just let it sit here. The troops are running around, doing random battle stuff. I really like that. Yeah, you're disloyal. I don't want to spend oratory power. Can't I bribe you with money? Okay, I can exalt you. Money, monthly loyalty, everyone else is going to be pissed. I could free hands you, which will make you corrupt. How am I going to manage this punk? Want me to take a look at what Rome's doing? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's go into uh, maybe political map mode for this. I mean, I gotta say, the train map mode is very nice because it builds in the political map mode and whatnot, but I find close up like this, I'm just, I'm gonna pop into military map mode to clearly see the borders. So it looks like Rome is going after Utriria? Utriria? I know, the Utes over here, the Ets right here. And probably are gonna do fine. Playing as Carthage would probably be fun. It's gonna, it'd be weird because they're so spread out, but it would probably be okay. Yeah, yeah, you can have access rights. Disloyal character, they're looking to start a civil war. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, tribe and output up. Because the tribes can produce um, manpower and money. How's the civil war not over yet? Okay, it's being sieged out now, so it's going to be okay. Etrigans. Carthage doing that. I think that's how Carthage looks at the start. I think this is how they begin. I'm not sure. But, like, they border so many things. They've got an infinite targets. So, Rika, one of our tribal chiefs... How old is she? 54. She's fallen ill. Perhaps if she's wealthy enough, she'll seek treatment. So, she's getting arthritis or dreadful. Send her wishes for a speedy recovery. I'm kindly... Oh, I didn't even look at my traits. I am kindly. I am prominent. I am intelligent. Hey! And I'm jealous. Um, so, I can do it. She'll still get arthritis, but she'll gain some loyalty. Well, there you go. A little bit of loyalty there. Some a little victorious battles. It's going to be okay. That's how Carthage is the start. Yeah, I thought so. You know, plot the chief, kill the chief. So, there's different things you can do with different people. Yeah, the problem is Brennus is a general. Okay? And I can't pull him off of that. Because this is his personal retinue. So, he has his own troops. As such, there's a very different set of options I can do with this guy. Because he's a clan chief. There, there's a limit to the kind of crap that I can pull off. I could smear his reputation so he'd lose popularity. He'd actually go to zero popularity, which would be kind of amazing. But I don't think that's going to matter. Popularity matters more, I think, in terms of chances to gain loyal cohorts. But these are his personal troops. Um, Red Dead, I have a, an early press copy here. All right, troops, troops, troops. Yeah, military access, that's fine. Manpower's on its way up. Numidian local power, militia folded. Oh yeah, because if you're if you're a bigger power, you can you can threaten war to people. Hey, is this is some territory I'm interested in grabbing. It looks like it's gonna be eaten up by someone else. It's fine. We don't have the oratory power to claim. Again, we might do some no CB wars. I don't know if right now is the time. Abandoned civil war. Oh, I think it just ended. Done. Yep, access rights. We have exiled armies. That's okay. They're gonna come home. They're on autopilot. They'll come home. And they'll spread themselves out to not take uh, attrition. Oh, we can afford our first military tradition. Okay. So military traditions. You, there's, every nation has got three sort of lines they can do. And you can go down a line to unlock more stuff. Or you can, you know, spread it out. It's fine. Um, there's not necessarily, like, a penalty. Or there's not necessarily a bonus, I think, to finishing a line. Other than, you know, maybe the stuff at the end is really, really, really good. So, we've got this line here. Chariots, light infantry, uh, less attrition or less weight. Manpower recovery speed. I mean, that's pretty nice. Morale, archer morale, and the chariots. So this is if you want, like, chariots and archers. You know, speedy, light weight, weight you know, hit and run kind of tactics. Speaking of hit and run, strike and withdraw. So that's light infantry, chariot cost... Um, more slave output. 
Um, Archer Force Combat. So yeah, it's, it, it unlocks a new tactic force, literally called Hit and Run. Um, although, oh, it's also got the Shield Wall here, which increases heavy armor defense. And army defense. Light infantry discipline. And then finally, Strike from Afar. Archer Offense goes up. National Manpower goes up by 10%. That's amazing. Chariot bonus. I mean, so they all have a little bit of stuff. Raise Levy's ability would be unlocked. Wrong culture happiness goes up. So you actually have more happiness to offset some of the wrong culture penalties. Heavy infantry offense. Siege ability is nice. And then 10% morale of armies. They're all pretty good. I kind of like this third one. This 10% morale of armies as a reward, I kind of like. Okay, strike from afar. A lot of chat is saying the third row, or third column is what I assume you mean. Columns, but yeah, number three, my lord. You thank you, we will do that. So we'll get some archer offense for now. That's going to be okay. Excellent. Still have this disloyal character, who's plenty disloyal. And we'll see what kind of wars we can shake up here. There might even be a no CB war. Hey, child is born! To me! I wonder if we can rename people. What this? Duel of the Chiefs. Oh! So Rika and Brennis want to have a duel. Unclear what made things they worth. Oh, duel to death is the only way to fix this. They both gain 10 loyalty. Although, you know, probably one's going to die. Oh, uh, duel for honor would be enough. Rika would lose loyalty. Brennis would gain it or have needed both. Whatever. Let's let them fight. Hopefully Brennis dies. After fiery blows and several wounds on both duelists, finally Rika stands as the uncontested winner. In one deadly blow, she cuts deep into her opponent's chest. Brennus falls to the ground in a pool of blood, a couple of haggard final breaths leaving his lips. With the duel behind us, hopefully things will settle down among the Yesenia without any more bloodshed. Yeah! Killed by Rika. There you go. There's our loyalty problem. Fixed. Get ricked. All right. Uh, oh, I need a new title. That was our wise one. So we need a new wise one. So a Britty over here has the highest zeal. That's just fairly loyal. I don't think that'll go down either. She's not a general. There's nothing weird going on over there. So that's going to be swell. Excellent. Uh, a family has been scorned. Oh, the Okani. This is probably Brennus's family. Um, they're not making any money because they don't have a job yet. Well, they have a small family, no real skill. I guess I could have considered maybe putting Vela in a position of some kind. If I put Velo, so your zeal is the highest. You could be a religious person. I guess I could have put you in the wise one slot. Damn, I probably should have. Oh well, they're a small family. They're kind of irrelevant. We'll see. 22 year old wise one. All right, lack of commander for the war band. Oh, this is. Oh, this. Was this Brennus's war band over here? So I can just appoint someone of my own. 17-year-old crafty person. That's a lot of corruption. You'd be better at enslaving. Oh, then you go down to a skill of three. I don't... And you're brave, which is really nice. Higher morale of armies is excellent. But at a three, that's pretty poor. I think we'll grab you. Sure, you're corrupt. What could possibly go wrong? Um, and get it started. So if I were to no CB war here, okay, that would be bad. What if I were to no CB war over here? It's not the worst. Now you're already in a war clearly, so you know some people are going to be weakened and whatnot. Merge them all together under your leader. Well, oh, that's right, because one my my leader over here. Yes, sir. This war band and this war band. We want to merge them together. You're absolutely right. Because if they gain loyalty, they'll just be loyal to me. Um, although, I, in a sense, I should have done that maybe... Oh, here. I'll merge them this way. So, my leader runs which warband? The first warband is run by me. So, I'm going to move over when everyone over to the first warband that way. I just wanted to make sure the leaders were, were selected, were assigned properly. In terms of effective stuff, yeah, we'll keep going with shock action over here. Actually, we could skirmish just fine, too. Yeah, 
Orange versus Bottleneck. Less casualties. Eh, no. There we go. We can do this. Uh, now, the weight might be a bit of a problem. This gives you an objective. I think you'll move around to somewhere. There we go. Where you'll get some weight, and that's going to be okay. Uh, there we go. This clan is building up their stuff, though. Which is fine. And yeah, over here... There you go. 0% attrition. So you can stand over there, and that's going to be just fine. Okay. Just to clear war, attrition won't be an issue. There's that. So if we switch back to the political map mode, right? We've got allies here and here. We're trading with these guys, but that's fine. We're kind of willing to start any crap anywhere, anytime. We're like, um... What was the guy from uh, Rick and Morty? Crumbopulous? The, the assassin guy? Ooh. Kill anyone, anytime. Seems Quill goes by see this Bellum, fuck Bellum. So, I mean, Bellum is like war or something. I don't know what the uh, the rest of that Latin translates to. I just love killing. I just love warring. Here I go. Oh boy, here I go killing again. Uh, more inventions. So, yeah, we'll, we'll power through a bunch of these. And we, I mean, at some point we'll look into our internal stuff. All right, we'll take we'll take some more the, some of the tech speed now. But yeah, our technology rate is going to be pretty poor because we don't have the citizens. We, right now, we just don't have the population pool. We need non-citizens to actually have money and manpower. Crumbopulous Michael, right? I can't believe I remember the Crumbopulous part and not the Michael part. I guess Michael doesn't really stand out that much. Okay, we have enough to claim, so. You're still in a big war over here. I'm worried that I'm going to start a war here. The other guys will peace out, and this country will just get, like, exterminated. I think we may have to wait for this war to finish. And then for us to see what we can jump on at that point. Now, this is assuming I can fabricate claims. Yeah, okay, I can fabricate things claims on non-adjacent provinces. And I can break some alliances, although I believe that will give me a truce timer. There will be peace in Albion once Isinia owns all of Albion. Yes, goddamn right. You see the tribe research exploit? No. It's just like turn everyone into a citizen or something. Yeah, looks like it can fabricate anywhere. I mean, maybe because I can reach by C zone? But like, can I fabricate on you over here? Ah, no provinces which we could conquer in a war. I'm betting we can do this because of the C zone. We have access, you know, for in, in EU4 parlance, we would be able to um, generate a core. We'd be able to core these provinces because of sea access. So I think there may be similar rules. I mean, coring's not a thing, but yeah. Breaking alliances, five-year cooldown. And I'd rather not. Like, I kind of want to keep my alliances around. These are in a big war too, but we'd be fighting... Well, not literally everyone, because some people would not join. Veterans do. After wars, toil, and hardship, with hopeful eyes, the veterans of our army look forward towards retirement. Da-da-da-da-da. We can meet this demand. Uh, you do not have enough farmland to please our veterans, but given them what we have may assuage their anger. Commanders like bribes. Our armies would be at low morale for four freaking years, or we don't need their support. Okay, well, I'm not going to click this. This at least has an upside. No shade complex or I'm... Swage retired veterans, yield them some reward. Why wouldn't I just say this? We can meet their demands. Seems fine. Is there a stab hit for breaking a truce? If not, just go. I think there is. Can I claim Rome? Nope. Latin regional power of Rome is outside our diplomatic range. Oh, we can't even talk to Rome. Yeah, truce breaking does give you a massive stab hit. You're at war. You're at war. What about these guys? Well, okay, there's Parisia. If we want to do the Parisian thing, if we were to declare... Actually, this would work okay. Um, I'll probably fabricate. And let's, let's go to war, man. More inventions. More tech investment. Wow, we're quite poor here. 
Yeah, fa like, well, fabricating's instant, yeah. <clears throat> it costs tons of power points. It's ludicrously expensive. I got a I got a 10% discount on it. It's still like horrible. Oh, I think the pe the war just ended. Because they're canceling all their yep. They're canceling all their access rights, so oh well. Uh let's just declare up over here. Oh you can't because you have a truce and you won't. Meanwhile, these guys will start some shit. Okay, hold on. Maybe we don't start with you. Maybe no CB over here. So who would get pulled in? Yeah, I don't think we can fight all that. Brigantia, Vota, that might be too hard as well. I'd rather have insta cost than low percentage. Have to wait 50 years. Yeah, I mean the 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 um, the fabricating in CK2 is like, oh my god, this hurts so badly. Can you play every country in the map? Yes, absolutely. Every single country here you can play as. So yeah, you you can go all the way from Great Britain to India. You got a little bit of Scandinavia. And then some amount of Middle Eastern Europe or uh, in Africa over here. Um, yes, you can you can import my furs. Uh, this is the same furs, probably. I don't know. I'll accept it. We'll take the money. We can use the cash. What about the Magenta and Wales over here? Oh, they're in a civil war, which is interesting. Right over here. Um, I don't know what that would do. They, the enemy allies would be the revolt. Let's do it. Just purity. When yes, but we can t we can take anything. I think even if it's just purity, I think we can just take it. Oh yeah, and then there's uncolonized lands here and here. Yeah, because there are people living here, but they don't have a flag. Right, right here. So we got some fri freemen, tribesmen over here, but they don't have a flag. They don't count as their own country. So there's ways, some of these guys are migratory tribes, so they can move around in here. And you can also settle this stuff and claim it and be like, here. Yeah, I know the, the, the minus two stab is pretty bad. Um, it'll cost us religious power to boost it up. On the other hand, you know, claiming stuff faster is better. We could just wait for more oratory power though. I'm actually, I'm kind of tempted for the Civil War to end, because I think it might do really weird things. If we're at war when the Civil War ends, it'll just be better to declare against a whole nation. So we'll just wait a little bit. I mean, our money's going up, our manpower's going up right now, so that's not too bad. I might build another building. I think we'll end up building marketplaces all over the place. Here, you're another provincial capital. I feel like that's an appropriate place to build them. I mean, in a sense, you want them in just what it, whatever your most populated cities are, but that's going to go okay. You can buy oratory power. You can exchange. Where is it? Oh, economy view. You can convert. Um... Oh, why is it not showing me the ability to convert power into money? Does, it, does something change? You used to be able to convert power into money and money into any power. I mean, there'd be a big loss on either side, but maybe they removed the ability to convert power into money. They removed it. Ah, this is different from the last build I played. So yeah, you can spend money to get points, to get power. And yeah, the cost of conversion increases with use under the current ruler. Ah, so every time you have a ruler, it resets. So yeah, we could do that, but I don't know. I think the buildings are also good. Um, Army morale recovery. So we're gonna burn through all these inventions here. Friends across the border. We could send gold to Debonia. Boudica. Well, there's Boudica. You were saying they were Isanian. I mean, I don't know if it's the Boudica, but apparently we have the wrong nation. Um, or we can say we don't care about them. Wrong Boudica? All right. All right. Um, you know what? High Priest can lose that. Keep the money. <laughs> the only proper response for a request of money is to declare war. <laughs> like the score over here. 
do we know what the breakpoint is? How can we check to see what, like, if we're a regional power, this or that or whatever, and what the breakpoint is for the next one? There's probably somewhere where we can see this information. Boudicca's more than like 350 years. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's way too early for the real Boudicca. So noted. All right, we almost have enough to go and do another claim. I'm just going to run it at speed five for a second here. A little bit of other wars. Defensive League weakening. All right, that's probably good for me. Let's switch over to the uh, diplomacy map mode. I would still really like... Yeah, see, this is going to work. Because we don't have a relationship with Dubonia anymore. And we have a claim? Right, I claimed these guys ages ago. They have a truce. They can't join offensive wars. We'd have to fight them on their own, which might be hard. That's a lot of dudes. How many cohorts do you have? 15 cohorts. We have 25. Now they pull in 8 over here and 17 from over here. I don't know, you guys. What about over here? No war goal on these guys, although it might be... It would certainly be a lot easier to fight. We could just claim these guys. Oh, the 17 guy has no manpower remaining? Oh, yeah. Which is kind of nice. What's the worst could happen? You know what? You're right. What could possibly go wrong? Let's get our guys all as far forward as possible and then declare war and just try to stack wipe things as quickly as possible. Quod vadis malum? Is that what could possibly go wrong? Or what could go wrong in Latin? That's amazing. Ah, oh, shit. That's great. Oh, yeah. And you're in another war with someone else. So you might be super distracted. All right. Let's go. Declare war. Take this. Go. Boom. Charge! Uh, alliances may be breaking. Oh, no, there you go. We can we can call you in. I guess some of the relationship might change a little once the war was actually in there. So that's good. Um, the capital's over here. They have a fort there. I mean, let's... Uh, take you and send you to the fort. And you're going to come here, there, and there. A jump on this guy would be nice though. Maybe we can. Hold on. My 11k. Excellent. Don't change your mind. Don't change your mind. Don't you? Yes, you're locked in. Get on, fool. Um, siege, siege, siege. I mean, some troops over here, but that's gonna be okay. These guys are gonna get wrecked. Awesome. Not a stack wipe, but we'll take what we can get. Now, where are you going? Up here, over here. I'm not actually going to catch you, am I? There it is. I'm going to catch you over here, though. Just keep your numbers as weak as possible. Alright, we're good here. You're going to go and siege that fort. You're going to go to Virtus and Dorn. So I try to keep this sort of triangle structure with my troops so they can reinforce each other fairly easily. Excellent. I'm just going to come down here, grab some of this stuff. Okay. I wonder if my navy, I can... Yeah, I can set you on autopilot. Here. Your job is to blockade hostile coasts, if there is any. Yeah, I was going to say, you're probably just going to stay there. Oh, there's a port over here. Maybe you'll move. Okay, sieging, sieging, sieging. No enemies that we can see right now. They might be distracted with other wars they were in, which is good. We need to keep, take control of this fort so that we can move around with impunity over here. Mubot, probably telling me... Oh yeah, we're running... I never updated uh, Mubot, so it's telling us uh, we're still playing Stellaris, which I really want to finish. There's honestly a part of me... I'm, I don't know why. I've been so into Stellaris the last... Well, honestly, ever since 2.2 whatever dropped... But, you know, the last couple of weeks, uh, especially, we did the Peacekeeper one, and now this. I'm just super into Stellaris right now. And um, part of me is like, even though Imperator is new and shiny, I'm like, yeah, but Stellaris, man. Like, you know, waffles. Uh, okay, they broke their alliance with us, which is a little too bad. They want to sue for peace. Um...
They're offering me... Oh, they're offering me cities, aren't they? It's hard to tell. What is this? Tony Debonia. This one here. Okay, they are offering me provinces. Hang on. Um, cancel you. Debonia. They're offering a province and a city. Yeah, no, we, we can do more than this. It's going to be fine. Let's just keep fighting. Okay, we've got some... Uh, some troops are moving in here to challenge us. Uh, we've got a new thing we can run here. I don't know, professional sailors, that's gonna be okay. Um, right, we're just gonna be ready to reinforce. Because they'll probably attack us there. We want to finish this siege. No, no, they're not attacking us. We do have an ally in here who's gonna get himself caught out. You see this? This is gonna be a battle that's gonna go badly. These indicators, I've not seen this exact type of indicator before in previous Paradox games. Where it's like, it's telling you a battle's gonna happen in a province and how it's gonna go, even if it's your allies, really handy. We're gonna try to reinforce. Oh, we can't reinforce directly because of the damn fort. Do I wanna jump in on this? I mean, these guys are about to lose. It's gonna be relatively even forces, but they'll be weakened. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, uh, we're gonna omen up for some more discipline here as well. Boom. Okay, good. Go in there. You can do it. We could lift the siege and go and help, but I really don't want to because it's about to pop. Okay, green, we're predicting a win. This siege just finished, which is excellent because I can go and do something like this. Okay, good. We were victorious. Awesome. Awesome. Troops over here. Oh, and you've been sitting around here the whole time too. Well, um, oh, you need, you're gonna need 5,000 dudes to go and siege this. So just do this. We'll grab our, um, our 9k stack and send you up over here. Or not. Oh, I can't get there. Interesting. Can't see some of these arrows. All right, we'll let them spread out. We'll siege some more stuff. We might just, op yeah, we might just automate all the troops at this point, actually. So they're all running away. Oh, no, we had a little free battle there. And we've gone and captured someone as well. So we want to... To be able to claim provinces, we have to hold the capitals. Uh... Someone else went and claimed that province. That's kind of annoying. I don't know what that's going to do to us. So I can't reach there. I'd have to get access rights. And they're saying no. Well, that's not very nice. These guys would. I think we can go... Yeah, because we're friends with these guys. We could walk through... We still wouldn't be able to get there. Oh, we'd have to ask both these guys for military access. To siege out the north. You know what? Who cares about that? It's not even contiguous. We're fine. Go be automated for now. I might run, like, the big warband myself or something. Actually, this is a, a fort. Yeah. Go down here, start sieging up the fort while the independent operations clean up everything else. That's going to be A-OK. -okay. Yeah, this is not the Belgium game. We're trying to make Britain great again. We're trying to make Great Britain again or something. Uh, you can jump in there. These are some mercenaries that are just sitting around. They're not part of the war. Ignore them because they're not color coded. You could hire them. <clears throat> An active war. We got 31% war score, which isn't that much. They keep looking for peace. Okay. You got a 9,500 army stack over here, which we're going to want to babysit. But yeah, my controlled army making sure to siege out this uh, fort. And then my other little guys are just going to go and grab all this random territory. Prominent centralization. All the clans belong to us, to us, to us. This is very expensive on oratory power, which is, again, how we make war claim, war goals. So we would gain some centralization, which I like. 
we'd personally gain prominence, although our prominence is fine. Rika would lose loyalty, which would drop her very low. Moving some of our people is only natural. Cheaper. Okay, less centralization or let things progress naturally. This would upset the magistrate. I like the all clans belong to us, but honestly, I don't think this is worthwhile. It moves a pop. That presumably moves to our territory, but no, we're gonna go, we're gonna go here. Somebody set us up the bomb. I think Isenia is gonna grow pretty huge here, which will be, we'll have some internal issues at that point. Uh, because we're gonna have lots of pops of the wrong culture. I think our religion's all gonna match. I think we're all Druidic. Let's take a quick look, actually, at political, cultural, yes, religion map mode. Yeah, so Druidic, Druidic, Druidic. So the religion's all going to be fine. But the culture map mode, while we're all part of the same culture group uh, over here, because it's the same color, there are some differences of the subcultures. So that's going to lead to some amount of, um, of tension with our aggressive expansion situation. Oh, they're going to attack us here, but we've got friendly troops and everything that are going to be sitting around reinforces. You can see my automated troops are also moving in here to be ready to reinforce. Oh, yeah, they changed their mind. I would think so. I didn't know she was Druish. She doesn't look Druish. Man, I got to rewatch Spaceballs. I haven't seen that in years. Years! And it's so good. There's creators of Total War, creative assembly to team up with Paradox. I I think like like Total War style battles would just would not fit. Like the pacing would be wrong. This is more this is more high level. This is about grabbing ten thousand dudes and saying go kill those bastards over there. Um, make sure to reinforce over here, please. You know it's not about microing the, the the you know you're not a general, you're an emperor. All right, you can just be independent operations again. It's gonna be fine. We won that. Siege is progressing. Uh, controlled army over there, but I'm going to leave that be so that we don't lift this siege accidentally. So we could finish the last invention. We could also just save the points for whenever we do get some tech, then more tech uh, inventions will show up in this list. Yeah, we're going to try to eat as much as we can over here. Yep, yeah, more people asking about the date. This is the a year since the founding of Rome. So we're currently in 291 BC, or BCE, uh, but 463 since the founding of Rome. Just because num having numbers count down would be dumb. So there's some action going on in the north again. I'm still going to finish this. Um, the automated armies over here, I think, might get themselves in a little bit of trouble. I'm going to finish a full siege down south, and then we'll come back up in the north. Uh, let the looting be gentle. We'd gain popularity and some money. Let the men roam free. We'd still gain popularity, more money. The retinue would become loyal to me. We'd be killing some citizens over here. We could become cruel and gain even more money. Let's not become cruel, but let's the, let the, mo the men roam freely. We'll take lots of money from, uh, the, from this place. It's going to be fine. And you can come over here. And you're gonna come way down there. Yeah, we'll just uh, we'll just finish off this little area. Then we'll come back and beat these guys. Actually, if we were to sue for peace now, looking for provinces, oh yeah, this suits me well. You'd agree for all your money as well. All this is gonna come to us, so we're gonna ignore this a little bit. Yeah, let's just end the war, man. Boom. This will increase our rank to regional power. Which is going to change a lot of our relationships. Our enemies deserve no quarters. There, we got lots of popularity. So we are now a regional power instead of a local power. Uh, since we're now an independent country with at least 25 cities, we can guarantee other countries, we can threaten wars, we can have alliances, although I believe only with other regional powers. And we get more trade routes, Diplo rep, and things like that, uh, or Diplo relations. Um, I believe that all of our old alliances, or maybe the defensive packs, turn into guarantees instead. Yeah, goodbye alliances. So if we take a look at ourselves, uh, we have a CB. We are now guaranteeing Kantiatia over here, which I think we're going to revoke that guarantee. Exporting goods. We have truces with people that we had the uh, the defensive block with. 
which also means they can't declare on us right away, which is nice. Um, and we're going to have to deal with, yeah, we have a civil war that's going to break out in 13 days, or 13 months. So, boom, 62% of our population lives in disloyal provinces and subjects. So we're going to put all our troops on um, fighting rebels for now. Hopefully they'll step on that a little bit. Um, yeah, we have a 0% loyal province over here. Uh, we do have it set to assimilation. We may need to assimilate a little faster. Oh, that's four citizens over here. <laughs> um, this is fine. All right, left league. Bring the speed down a little bit. Our troops are going to move around. 12 months to the Civil War. Uh, trade route in the capital. No one no one's going, is willing to trade anything with us. <laughs> this is the difference between, I would say, EU4 and Rome, right? Some of the warfare feels very EU4-y, but this, the internal crap, is much more prevalent here in Rome, right? You gotta keep care of your, your various characters so that they don't start a civil war. You gotta take care of your provinces in different ways because of their civil war bullshit. Yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be interesting. Oh yeah, they do have increased unrest with the assimilation. So while they're assimilating, they have more unrest. Hmm. Real question is, when will air be united? Nice. This little province is... This is... That was a lot of unrest. Lots of unhappy pops. All right, I'm gonna start assimilating some people here. I mean, they're still gonna be fairly unhappy, to be honest. Oh, we have a lot more citizens now, which is nice. But we'll try to make it less critically unhappy. Yeah, we could run local autonomy, that's true. Um, so their population output, they won't grow very fast, but their happiness will be boosted substantially. I mean, you've been assimilated. You're still pretty unhappy, though, with tyranny and whatnot and things. I mean, and this is just... I'm just looking at one city here, right? These are all cities within the same province. So they're all pretty cranky. Okay. Um, I don't remember. Does it cost me points to change this? Yeah, 55 um, oratory power. It's very expensive. That being said... I think we'll do it in this one, because we control the entire province. We'll run this, but yeah, their uh, their loyalty is at 14% and dropping. You know, but what's a little civil war? <laughs> well, you're at 100% happy. You're only 21% happy. I'm gonna assimilate you, get you up a little higher. Uh, trade routes. Yes, we still can't. Invention, maybe. Except you. Uh, we don't have much manpower, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna recruit more troops. In fact, it's going down. But I think it's because it's replenishing armies. Yeah. Right now, they'll balance back. They're all set on rebel busting. They're trying to stand places. Right? Are they being modified by local troops? Is there anywhere that shows... I'm assuming having troops parked in these provinces is helping to bring down the unrest, but I'm actually... Governor's local troops is just says plus zero. I don't know. Reduce taxes? What? Not gonna do that. That would be crazy. Um, local unrest minus one. Maybe. Does it cost us points to change? I'm not seeing anything with it. All right, let's do it for now. Oh, and I can change it right away again. Ah. Yeah, we'll drop the fleet maintenance, because why not? War averted. Yeah, we might go around threatening some people at some point. Uh, can get more trade routes or more trade income. Slaves needed for surplus. No. We'll leave the army maintenance where it is. Can assign army to region to lower unrest. Oh, is it doing the EU4 style thing? 
Force March, attachment not allowed, unit reorganization, create new unit, recruit two, split in half. How? Yes, there was a way. There was a way. I remember that now. Yeah, lower trade route, you get a trade route. I do remember there was a way to assign... Do you just give it to the governor? But the thing is, the governor is me. And I have my troops. There was a way to assign this. I mean, I have them on Fight Rebels, but that's that's not it. I think maybe it's if I have a governor that's maybe not me, and I assign him that. Button with the standards. Oh, only armies without a commander can be assigned to region. Ah, thank you. Okay. So, which is fine. What I can do is I can uncommander this, which presumably... There we go. What do you mean capital region? This isn't my capital region. Not assign an army to your capital region. How is this my capital region? Isn't my capital here? Regions are bigger than provinces. Region map mode. Oh shit, all of Britannia. So all of Britannia is a region. So I can't assign these troops. Where am I in this list? Senatus. I don't see myself anymore. What? Oh, right here. Oh, I've got to wait 12 ma months before I can reassign him. All right, that's fine. We'll just wait then. I don't see any mark about them reducing the unrest from where they are. It's like governor's local troops. I, th I think it's something with that. I think because all my provinces have me as a governor. I think that's why. So maybe what I should do is... Cannot change the governor of your capital province. This is not my capital province. Maybe because I'm a regional power? Something's... I should be fine if your war exhaustion goes down. Oh, that's something I hadn't considered. Yeah, that will help. Warriors honor, let them have their due. Discipline, loyalty gain chance, or that chief would lose loyalty. Okay. They may become more ambitious, yeah. Vela might cause me a few issues, we'll see. How did I get this? What is this? Is this because of the region view? No, that's interesting. So I guess this is, yeah, this is when you become, like, the big Roman power and you have many, many regions and they need a certain amount of, like, autonomy, I guess. Well, I mean, I'll keep you on Fight Rebels. I have no idea if this has any impact on what you're going to do right now, but we'll, we'll go ahead and set that up. And they changed the governors were installed on the regional level. Oh. Okay, see... Oh, Civil War! Yay! Okay, um, this is what I get from not reading the latest patch notes and um, and dev diaries. 
So I was wondering, yeah, so my provinces in my country, which is now much smaller because of our civil war, um, <laughs> every region has one governor, is that it? So I don't have all these micro governors. Oh, that I actually do like quite a bit. Um, we're gonna have to assign like just literally anyone at this point. You. Get in here. Try to beat these rebels. Are you a rebel? Do you not move. Let's go to diplomacy mode so we can see where the situation is. Yeah, they don't feel comfortable, I guess, entering over here. Well, do it anyway. And then this troop over here, you're trying, you're gonna catch these people over there, and hopefully do okay. We need some titles assigned. Well, that's because of the Civil War situation. I'm sorry, are you skill nine? Very nice. We still have a family being Chun. Yeah, so ideally the Axie family over here, if we can give them a roll, that would be very helpful. We need researchers too, geez. So Akus is probably from the Axie family. You're a seven as opposed to an eight, but we'll give you a job so you're not being shunned anymore. And then we'll just take highest possible skill for things. Um, low Navy maintenance, all right, because we're at war, but that's okay. Uh, we'll leave that be. Uh, we'll get ourselves a bodyguard who hopefully has high loyalty. I wasn't even checking. Just going by skill over here. Okay. So we're going to jump on these guys. Done. And... I guess we're going to go and siege out this fortress over here. Okay. Go up to speed four. Oh, you're still, you're still around. Hold on. Oh, right. Pathing to you is going to be a pain in the ass because of the fort. Well, let's try to bop you first and then we'll go and take the fort. As I say, these guys are going to get hit. Run away! Actually, it'll only take a second. I'm just... Nah, no, let's keep it. I actually can't... I can't reach here. I think the fort's blocking all the movement. I can't leave with this army. Quill tripled in size caused civil war. Yeah. These internal issues, it's going to be very different. Like, it's sort of a map painting game, but not the same way as EU. Because the internal issues you have to worry about are, are certainly bigger. I mean, it's not like... Victoria 2 level of freaking, um, you know, worry. I like how we have no fleet. It's warning us that we have low fleet maintenance. We actually don't have a fleet right now. All right. There you go. That's not bad. We'll move you as a group to whatever you can reach. That's not guarding the fort, so something like that. Map painting and war simulator. Forts are like black holes. Yeah, they just suck all the characters in, all the armies in. Oh, I think the Civil War over here just ended finally. No, 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 the revolt is still a thing. These guys, so this is like... Oh, it's these guys. Ordovicia and there, but still, they've been... They've been civil warning for a long time. Of course, this is gonna be a pretty substantial civil war. I think we're okay. Another country entered the war against you? Oh, yeah! All right, well, this should be okay. Oh, you're supposed to enter into one of these provinces, please and thank you. This siege is now starting to go. Okay, I'll move around a little bit. Oh, wait, nope. Oh, shit, you're already on the move. Okay, everyone move in there. Be ready to jump, because you're locked. But we should be okay. They're going to get a river crossing penalty. And we're going to have superior numbers. And they came in, I think, with lower morale, too. Morale takes a long time to recharge in this game. So manpower is a lot slower to build up and morale, even within a single war, takes a lot longer to build up in this game. Um, so everything leads to a very different pace. Very different pace. 42%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the so full impressions and review are still under embargo at this point. I mean, I think, I think it's a high quality game. I think 
there will be... Oh, it's a civil war, so we retake this right away. Nice. Um, and this is the butt face that entered the war on the other side. And he's got a fort, so we're going to have to go and siege that shit out. Get so much stuff. Arg. I suspect, like, if you're a very fast player, you might, you know, <laughs> burn through the, you know, the built-in vanilla content uh, kind of quickly, but... Um... gonna hold here-ish, maybe. Is there another fort here? My god. There are so many forts. That's really annoying. Lose money, gain centralization, and centralization per month. Or we could lose loyalty instead and get less centralization. No, centralization is good. I think what we is what we want. I would like to hop on this guy, but I think we'll just sit here and siege this instead. Jumping on these guys should be okay. I was saying yellow here, but we've got massive stat uh, strength in our favor. There we go. Let's group you up over here. It's, you need a thousand people to siege out a generic province, and five thousand for every level of a fort. Do subjects need to fight for the country if it has a civil war? Um, I'm not sure what happens. The revolt over here would like to ally with me. I mean. No. Right? No? Maybe? I don't know. Alright, you're done there. Defensive leave. Um, yeah, we'll take some defensive leave. That's gonna be okay. I kinda wanna retake this province here. But I think what we'll do is we'll focus on going forward. Actually, um... Can I reach this fort? I didn't think so. We can reach this one. We can move in with an 8k army, although I, with their reinforcements over here, I'm not sure that we can win that. We may have to wait for this siege to finish. And then just go from there. Uh, oh, they've got quite a few troops kicking around. Can I get out of here in time? Hmm, maybe not. What's the landscape over here? I guess we'd have to be in terrain map mode to be able to tell. Planes. So we have no defensive bonus. Yeah, I'm going to lift this siege. There you go. I knew that would sort of suck. So we're going to have to restart our siege here. But now they're still looking at attacking, but we've still got these reinforcements. I mean, they might go in with bigger numbers. No, they're not going to move from here, which is interesting. Boom. All right. Just hang out there, complete this siege, and then what we'll do is move everything in against here. Musket Stonehenge. Yeah, Stonehenge is somewhere down here, right? It's not on the map, is it? But, like, Stonehenge is in this area of the world? Is it on the map? Oh, no, right there! Under the army! I was just looking at the fortresses, and, and I thought that was a city because the, the army was there. I couldn't quite see it. Yes! Let's get Stonehenge back. I don't think it does anything. I think it's just visual. I don't think there's any traits here, but who knows. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can, we can export stuff for money. Uh, you're sieging that out. I might be able to go after you, but no. Let's move over here. Start sieging all these forts out. When is Jesus' time? 288 more years. Plus or minus a few years. I am now arbitrary. Oh. Actually, that sounds pretty accurate. <laughs> that is super accurate, actually. Bum, bum, bum. Maybe they'll add a bonus for Stonehenge later. It could be. Art imitates life. I vastly prefer st cheese hand. Mm. Of course, I make a mistake of not having any food before I stream. So then inevitably, sometime, the conversation turns to some sort of food stuff and I get really hungry. Stonehenge equals Petrahenge. What's the end game time? I actually don't know. Someone can clarify that, what, what the end game time is. Is it like the equivalent of like 300 AD or something like that? All right, siege done here. I'm tempted to go and smack these guys, but grabbing all the forts is going to be good. Because once we've got those, like the rest is like, you're going to keep playing like um, whack-a-mole 
trying to stop these various sieges, except for the fort ones, because they, they stick hardcore, and they actually siege adjacent stuff too, which is going to be nice. Uh, 313 BC to 27 BC. Ah, okay, so we're still going to be in BC era, so we don't get, we don't get to see the baby Jesus. No baby Jesus for us. You want to maybe attack there? I think he's desperate to try to move out. Oh, they might... I want to finish the siege. I'm kind of okay with... Yeah, they are attacking here. They are maybe going to reinforce, but not in time, no. Um, when this siege finishes, since this one's just started, I think I'll move both these guys to go and squash this army. Right over here. Probably a good idea to avoid controversy. I mean, maybe. Although, you know what? Like, let's be honest. The Paradox Grand Strategy games don't shy away from historical controversies and stuff, right? Like, the stuff you can do to people based on their religion is ludicrous. Um, you know, there could just be a message. Hey, there's some... You just play it off. There's some weird guy over in, you know, these sandy areas talking about some, like, you know, weird stuff with God. Yeah, we don't really know what he's talking about, but, you know, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's not going to affect the world in any way whatsoever. And then just move on from there. Um, give us money, gain corruption. Gold is always worth its weight in gold. That is a good line. Civic matters? Civic power is nice. We have a lot right now. All right, civic is for a tech, which we're not really developing. Um, refrain from partaking this corruption. I don't know. A little corruption's fine, right? It's just, it's just a way for thin corruption. There you go. Let's do it. Finish the siege. They do have quite a few troops around. We gotta make sure they don't um, group them all up because we'd be bad. Arg! Watch them finish the siege before we do. Now it's gonna be the point. This one's gonna be progressed so much, and we're not gonna want to lift this siege. A gift! A local power just sucking up to us. Very nice. I guess I may as well get the last one of these inventions because it's kind of annoying me that it's like keeps popping up. I'm like, what is this again? Right. All right. No, it's going to be worth doing this, despite lifting the siege. I mean, it hurts, but what can you do? He's going to try to run away. I don't think he's going to successfully do that. And we'll just make sure to hit him with everything we've got. Smack, 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 smack. Done. Okay. Now, we're going to put the 10k back over here. And I don't know what the other stuff is going to do. Just sit here for a second and not get attrition. We've got you. Oh, I was going to say, why is this striped and not taken over? Right, this is the person who joined in the war. Um, and the troops aren't centered on a province. The, like, the points, they, they've made it, made it so the troops don't actually stand on the, the visuals of like the forts and the cities. But by not centering the dudes, it does make it a little confusing sometimes. I guess what I'll do, I'll ignore the stuff in the back here and I'll just sort of keep pushing um, into Cornwall. Cornwall, right? Um, yeah, so separate pieces are different. I think you can after a while. I'm not sure. Oh, actually, there's no peace here. The Civil War is different. I can't... Yeah, there's no sue for peace. I think we just have to, like, stomp it all out. Um, we're going to go for manpower because we are on the cusp of running out here. And we're still being attritioned like mad in many places. Once we've got this fort, it'll automatically siege the adjacent stuff, so it'll be a little less work for us to do. I think we're gonna attack there. Should probably... Sure. Pick an alliance with someone, that's fine. Uh, ooh, duel to death! You know what? Sure, you guys can duel with each other. Whoever's left is gonna be quite happy. We did lose our elder. Uh, looks like our elder is going to be 39. He's worried about turning 40. He's feeling very old. I don't know what that's like at all. Oh, we lost our commander over here, too. We are not currently commanding anything. Oh, this 18-year-old dude, though. Uh, heavy infantry discipline. We should put him in charge of another army. 18-year-old skill 10. Still, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to put myself in charge of one of the armies. 
39 has a beer belly. Oh, it really does sound like me. <laughs> uh, trade, sure. Yep, that's fine. These guys are moving around. They're not attacking me, which is sort of what I was expecting. Since I sort of left myself maybe a little vulnerable over here. All right, you know what? The revolt... I don't think I've joined your civil war. Or no, maybe I did. No, no, this is just me. This is my civil war. Derp. Okay, do not attack me here. This siege is nearly done. Yes! All right, we gained some popularity. No slaves. This is going to auto-siege all these. You can already see them progressing. I'm just going to go and step on that guy, because I can. Um, he's going to move over here. I'm just going to wait. Oh, you're considering an attack. Okay, let's reinforce right away. Boom. Now, I'd very much like to hit this guy. He's in the forest. Maybe we just move here for now. He's still going to be in the forest, but he'll be very vulnerable to attack. Oh, speaking of attacks. All right, that was fine. That was a bold move, Cotton, but I don't think it worked out for you. If we do this, we won't actually attack you. No, good. Which is fine. And there we go. We'll do this. See that? Auto sieges. And you are locked into moving to Venta. So we'll move into Venta as well and destroy you. And we can probably just automate our troops to clear things up at the end. Moving all up here. There's another fort. So you get smashed. Excellent. 34% war score. Uh, I'm going to move you all the way over here. We may automate some of these troops now. I don't think we have to 100% this. I don't know if we just need the majority or three quarters or something. I don't know where the uh, the line is to end the Civil War, but I don't think we actually have to finish it. Um, I'm going to put you on uh, Defend Borders. Oh, which would also retake territory, which you don't recognize over here. Never mind. Because, yeah, it would automatically de-siege anything that got stripey, but these are not stripey. It's, it's different. So we'll just pull you back. That's going to be fine. Everything's okay here. Yep. Left our defensive league. Oh, we were a local power again. Oh, that's why we got invites to these things once more. Right, okay. Well, that's fine. They're victorious. Done. So yeah, I'm actually going to grab all these guys and just tell them to uh, independent operations. And the big stack, I'm going to control myself and make sure that we're sieging at this fortress. Uh, I guess we'll import fish, since it's literally the only thing we're allowed to import right now. We get a little pop growth, which is going to be good. Now, hopefully this puts us on a cooldown timer for the Civil War, because a lot of people over here still are going to be kind of cranky with us. But yeah, we're out of manpower. Now, our, our clan retinues, they have their own manpower pool, which is kind of nice. Like, the clans, it's very interesting, because you have to manage their loyalty, and they really like becoming disloyal. On the other hand, they give you a whole other manpower pool, which is kind of amazing. I don't think they have a manpower pool. I think they just regenerated a constant rate. All right, 2nd of May, a little autosave. Just running on speed 4. We could probably go up to 5, but then we'll worry about not being able to react. we got some starving pops. Are you just... You don't feel confident to actually take this land? I'm pretty sure you can do it. No, you're not going to be able to do it. You're too small at 800, but it's okay. We'll get the rest. Minus 21%. We got that. We still have no boats. And I'm kind of okay with that. Clans are a wonderful pain in the ass. Yeah! Uh, only 8k here. Still okay for now. Grabbing this fortress will help. And they're not going to be able to siege any fortresses um, out from under me or anything like that. Over there. You're going over there, which is fine. And this fort will automatically claim all this land over here. I mean, this is the final fort. We'll have access, we'll have control over all the forts in this war. I would love to separate piece out this butt face who joined into the Civil War. So yeah, you're going to grab this, but it's not actually a fortress, so. All right, done over here. Done over here. Yeah, move forward. Nope, oh, no longer getting fish. Oh, we can get grain. I like grain. 
Although it does cost me power every time I start one of these. Um, a religious proceedings. We can leave the priest alone. We'd lose stability and gain national unrest? No. Gain religious power. Gain loyalty. Okay, that's good. Gain stability. Lower unrest. Piss off the priest. No, we need this. <laughs> we need the stability and unrest right now. And unrest reduction. We got a gift. That's great. 42%. I'm going to de-siege over there, but that's fine. Let's move over here. Actually, you just move down here. It's fine. Yeah, you're going to run away, which is okay. As soon as this goes, all of this will start auto-sieging. And I think we'll have control of the last capital. That might be the um, the end of the rebellion. It might be capital-based. Later, Rome stomps everything in the first half. <laughs> so Rome did go and expand. Okay, victorious there. Let's take a look at political map mode. They've been fighting um, these guys. Actually, this is not their first war because they warred for some of this territory and have, have claimed it. They've, they've actually pieced out. They own it. They must be in a war. I guess they're in war against Tuscia now instead of... Oh, Etruria, Et Etruria over here. Oh, yeah, there's definitely been some changes. Rome is expanding. They've got territory all the way down here. What about Carthage? Carthage, I think, has lost territory, actually. Egypt, pretty much the same. Kush, pretty much the same. Maybe some other changes, but I don't know what the deal is over there. Don't really know the landscape very well yet. Uh, you're just sitting here being attrition, which could probably be ameliorated. Can you reach there? No. We can stick here, wait for the fort to go, and then we'll jump on that. Although, again, I think this will probably end once that fort ticks over. I'm going to put you on independent operations for now and see what happens. Quill, Carthage still has its vassals. Looks like tribes split in half. Oh, I see. Discipline, loyalty gain chance goes up, or the general will lose loyalty. And I'll say let the soldiers have their due. we really got to keep those generals loyal. Otherwise, we're just going to have back-to-back -back civil wars. Like, this was a civil war because of province unhappiness. But general unhappiness, civil wars is a thing. Okay, we have claimed this. How come I can't move here? Wait, do they have a... They have a fort here? No, they don't. Now they have a fort here? What? Their capital is moving? Is their capital fort that's moving? Okay. That is somewhat annoying. Fort on wheels. Let's de-siege these two. Oh, they moved their their capital again or something. I'm assuming I'm hoping they're having to spend points to do this. Like, can I move my capital? Because now I can do this. Ooh, yellow. Yeah, it is attacking to the forest, admittedly. Come over here. Okay, well, let's make sure they can't refort over here. Move the capital because you take province in the Civil War. I guess, right, they always have to have a capital. But... Still kind of annoying, right? See, so you're retaining the British Isles, yes? still running out of territory. Come on, let's end the civil war. The civil war is not very civil. Alright, there we go. They moved their capital again. So we're not having to siege them out fully, at least. Like, for some of these. Um, if you want to engage there, I'm totally good with it. 100%. Hundo P. There you go, you're locked. 
So we're going to have the defensive forest and massive manpower advantage, although not right away. You just got to hold out. Hold out long enough for the reinforcements. Hold out for the reinforcements. You can do it. Yes, there we go. Oh, -ho. boom. All right, let's grab uh, you and go there. So we need at least 5k for a level one fort. Money is very good. Actually, I should probably spam out some buildings. Um, let's grab uh, one of the larger stacks and just move over here. Although I don't think you were being attrition. Ah, there we go. We are victorious in the Civil War. Finally, at long last, the brutal struggle with our own nation has come to a close. The remains of the armies once commanded by Virdux Axis lies broken and demoralized, awaiting our judgment. Uh, Viridorix himself has been cast in irons while we decide how we should punish him and his co-conspirators for transgressions against the people of Isenia. Treason demands punishment, but let the soldiers live. So we'd kill a clan chief, but get 5,000 manpower, or we could kill them all. Military purges giving us national unrest. All of our own characters would gain loyalty. I think tre we'll let the soldiers live. I mean, you know, they were just... All in the order is in this case, it's fine. Let's talk about Black Flag. Where do I have exiled soldiers? Oh, it's the uh, it's the ships. There you go. Automated navy over here. The ships which we no longer had control over. Okay. So we're importing from these guys and stuff, but we have no alliances whatsoever. Um we are guaranteeing some people again. Now you who we're currently guaranteeing. We can get to the point where we can... Yeah, feudatory status. Uh, their opinion you must be at least 100. It's currently my... Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna revoke our guarantees here. Who else are we guaranteeing? You over here? Yeah, that's not... Uh, no. I think I was looking at the wrong country, but that's okay. We have truces, guaranteeing military access or granting. Um, I'll just revoke it just to clear up this list here. <laughs> 21 year old with skill 10. Sure, buddy. All right, troops are still being attrition in places. All right, they're moving around, but maybe not as quickly as I would like to avoid the attrition. Still don't have much manpower. Ours is a nation that sticks together. Um, we don't want local unrest. We don't care about pissing off another country. We'll take the religious power. I'm okay with this. Game has great character portraits. He's not bad, eh? Okay. I'm going to revoke your guarantee. There. So we have a bunch of truces. Exporting and whatever. That's fine. Um, I don't think we're going to go to war right away, because we still need to stabilize our country a bit. It'd be nice to have some manpower. Right now, we're still reinforcing our troops. We're going to drain all our manpower just to re reinforce what we've got now. We could bring some of these guys down. We've got tons of money, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to spam out a bunch more marketplaces. I still think that's quite cool. And just because I feel like it makes the most sense, we'll build some marketplaces in our various provincial capitals. Done. It's going to give us more money. It'll increase our civilization level powers for the week. Now we still have bad research ratio. The other thing we might want to do since we have some power to spend now is promote people to um, promote pops to be citizens. <laughs> Currently no one can be promoted to be citizens. Wow. Because we probably have no freemen so we'd have to promote some oh, this order is different. I guess this, this one is, is alphabetical. But it's slave, then freeman. No, slave, then tribesman, then freeman. So we'd have to promote people. Promote freeman. Wait, hold on. Oh, this promotes slave to freeman. So this promotes freeman to citizens. Oh, okay. Not the interface I was expecting. All right, fine, fine, fine. I'm gonna promote all my freemen in my various provinces to citizens in my capitals, because that is where I am currently building the marketplaces. So we'll see what that does. Sure, we'll do more trades. More money's more good. Yeah, this will be on, um, this will be on YouTube later for sure. 
province loyalty is really good. So it turns out once you have a civil war and you beat the crap out of the people who are being cranky, it turns out that your, your loyalty is gonna be pretty good after that. So yeah, we still really just have to let everything rebuild. At this point, we're very happy with internal growth. I mean, let's look at it. We are the by far the dominant power in, in Britain here. We can afford to take a beat, enjoy the fact that we have Stonehenge, and then um, just, you know, move on after things have been set up. We can we can afford to grow a little taller. I mean, we're bigger than Rome. Now, Rome's going to have a lot more citizens. Uh, that's their manpower. Can we... Yeah, 754 pops in Rome. We have 168 pops. All Druidic, although we do have several different cultures present. Yeah, no manpower. Yeah, we're big, but we have no people. So, I mean, effectively, Rome's a lot bigger than we are. But shush. Uh, how about trade routes? Do any of our provinces have trade routes? No. If we changed policies, we would. Um, oh, can we? Hold on. Can we get a demographic breakdown in the entire province? No. It'd be nice here, like, as a choice to see, hey, should we go to, you know, um, cultural assimilation or not? Oh, I am going to change you to cultural assimilation right now. Sinatus is responsible for conserving 29 pops in total. What, so far? And is regarded as a bringer of Icenian ideas. An unknown quality. Huh. Yeah, we will convert these guys. Oh, and Insignia has, like, poor growth. No, we don't want that. Um, maybe we'll take Civilization Effort? Over here in our core province. Big, but with no people. So Quill is basically a British version of Canada. Ha! Ha ha! Nice, Finnegan. Excellent! Tribesmen aren't below, they're below slaves in that list because it's alphabetical. Um, but if we actually click on a city, it's slaves, then tribesmen, then freemen. It's just, I mean, I mean, I can't blame this list for being alphabetical. It's reasonable, although I think it'd be more reasonable if it were sorted based on the actual sort of hierarchy in this, um, you know. Empire? Words? There are commerce taxes you can get a ton of extra trade routes. Yeah, and I mean, people will keep bringing that up. So, you know, presumably other people have looked at this and figured, oh, this is actually a really good thing to, for us to do. Like if I bring this up, or sorry, bring down the taxes, we'll get 15% reduced national commerce income, but more trade routes to import, you know, so we can boost growth and all kinds of different stuff. I don't know, man. Quill implement ancient uh, universal healthcare just to flex in America. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. We got another military tradition. I have to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, we're gonna keep going down this right-hand side. 10% more national manpower for confederations. Sounds amazing. Absolutely 100% want that. We're desperate for manpower. We have none in the bank and we haven't even reinforced all of our armies yet. So that seems like a good idea. Maybe more coffee? A little bit. Bump, bump, bump. Nice and cold. There you go. You can take the export. That's fine. So we have access to different trade goods now. Um, oh, that's trade routes. Trade goods is up here. There it is. Oh, disagreement on the highest level. Sulis the Strict, a woman of sound reputation, and Senetius Bulgus, a nobleman of great virtue, recently started to spar virtuous, uh, furiously while attending the clan council. So we can side with one and become friends. Side with the other. So, okay, if we side with Sulis, then I becomes friends with Sulis, and Sulis gains loyalty, but Senatius loses a ton of loyalty. If I side with Senatius, we don't make a friend. Although we raise loyalty from the person who's got the least, or we can say, tell them to stop bickering. We gain popularity, but trash both their loyalty. I want a friend, man. Who doesn't want a friend? So that's us. How old are we? 
43 years old. We've got our first friend, Sulis the Strict, which is going to help her loyalty because we've got the friendship thing going on. Arbitrary. Minus one Diplo relations. A little less finesse. Eh. Still not a bad ruler overall. So yeah, I'm still okay with sitting at peace for the while because we do have to recharge things. We'll run at speed five. You've got a friend in me. Wish I could make friends that easy. I know, right? It's hard to make friends as a grown-up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can keep trading. Honestly, I, I'd put on the, like, accept all trade request things. I mean, you know, there's probably some people maybe you don't want to trade with or something. Look at this little, like... We're in political map mode. So this is... Debonia... is just a single city now. That's incredible. Oh, the revolt is over. So things have broken up a lot here, which is going to be great for giving us targets. But I still think it makes sense to, like, wait a beat before we move on. More omens. At this point, I mean, I could keep raising our cap for manpower, which will increase how much manpower we get. But overall, it's really slow. You can see 108 each month. It's just crazy. I'm going to take the pop growth, and we'll just see if we can just get a little bit bigger here. It's easy to make friends when you rule a country. All the clans belong to us. We have lots of oratory power. If we're not fabricating claims, we can actually use some of that to maybe create some laws. I, you know what? I know it's going to tank some of the loyalty here, but I really like more centralization. So we're going to do that. Now let's take a look at some of our situations. So right now our centralization is at 68%, which helps to boost our civilization level, which is nice. Um, right now, what are we? We are 26% civilized. I mean, it's not great, but it's okay. We could consider changing more laws. Although, keep in mind that the clan chiefs get really upset when you change laws. So here we get tribesman happiness. We could change it for more omen power. We could ban human sacrifice, which reduces omen power, but gives us monthly civilization changes. Guys, I think we should ban human sacrifice. It will make two people disloyal. No! <laughs> Wilhelm just says, no! Nay! But tasty humans! Wow. Um, changing some of our um, economy laws might be good, too. Encouraging infrastructure would do what? It's more expensive to move tribesmen, but we're not really doing that. Giving us a 25% discount to movement? Crazy. Although right now we have pop growth. That's the thing. Like, none of the laws are really, like, clearly better than one of the other. Declaration of Superiority. Oh, wow, we should do this one. So, aggressive expansion lowers faster. So, which was going to help us internally a lot. It hurts our Diplo rep. As we just, like, no, no, we're just going to kick everyone's asses all the time. Perma War. Maybe I won't change it quite yet. Where we get alternate green from? <laughs> so this uh, war ban is still—it's not even up to full strength, and we have no manpower. I mean, the thing is, we could probably still wreck pretty good as is. It might—there might actually be some some point in us having merged these guys to lower our standing troops a bit more. Oh, the lists are spaced out so much you have to scroll. Vicky would have all that on the same screen. Yeah, I know. It's like—it's big font. I'm betting there's some mods that tweak this for people who don't want it. And, you know, the, the sort of 1080p, like, resolution mods, which makes these uh, dialogue boxes bigger. But when you make, you know, when you make the game, when you make the product, you have to, like, aim for, you know, what you think is the lowest common denominator of UI size and different things like that. Oh, yeah, you can adjust the UI scale. That is a good point. Although, I suspect, you know, that'll just shrink it. I don't think that'll let us see more on the screen. I think it'll just shrink the size of all these UI elements. But it's nice to have that built into the game, because they've had to sort of reverse engineer that into some of the games, and some of them never got updated. Now the engine's just got, like, native support for all the proper UI scaling, which is very important. I think Hoi 4's got it as well. Do, 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 do. You should get Londinium. I know, right? We will. All right, manpower's starting to accrue again, which is good. I mean, we're letting a lot of time pass. We got money, we could plop down another building, although if we're gonna war, we want a little bit banked. So we could consider, like, if we were to declare over here, breaking truce, mine, okay. So there's a lot of truce breaking because of the relationships we'd have going on. Okay, we don't have one here, so we could just go and 
um, make a claim, and actually your allies it's would super not be dangerous. I actually think Celeria over here might be our next target. Hey, Whiskey and Chocolate from Bale Vala, thank you very much. Hey, cool, my 18 month subs are donation for every month. You'll be playing the new vampire game. Yes. Or some Anno. I mean, there's some Anno on the channel. There'll probably be more Anno. Um, the new vampire game, Bloodlines 2, I'm 100%. I mean, it's not gonna be out until next year or something, but we'll see. Let's go raid the French Barbarians. I don't think raiding is in the game. I think what we'll do is we'll do one more war and then we'll wrap up the stream. I said I'd go until about two. That was 25 minutes ago. We'll, we'll do one more war. Um, so it was this one, which I didn't think would be too bad, right? I will go and uh, fabricate a claim. It's not a huge province, but it'll do. And then we'll wait until the 18th of November. Uh, in the meantime, we'll get everyone up over here. Auto save. Oh, raiding ports is a military tradition for some countries. Okay. I mean, I guess Carthage would probably do some stuff. So, yeah, we'll go and declare war. Boom. Done. I'll switch over to diplomacy map mode because it makes it easy to track stuff. I don't suppose you would be willing... No, no military access. What about you over here? No, no military access. I don't know if military access is mutual in this game. Uh, we are not going to send everyone over. Hold on. Just you. Because we're being attrition like crazy already. Review embargo lifts on release day. Uh, stars of War! Oh! Druids and the Stars awaited our troops to march upon the enemy, and we found one in Siluria. With ceremony to bless our troops, we move forward to find the triumph we promised. We have get 10% more army morale for five years. And some religious power. The gods are with us! Bum, 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 bum. And yeah, if you do trade away all your excess goods, you lose the excess. That's true. Uh, let's remove making us lose the following bonus, but would earn us money. Question is, is this discount worth more than this or whatever? Uh, yeah, I'm still mostly going to say yes. That's why you don't ban human sacrifice. Oh, because the gods, yes. So 12k over there, but we got 16. Oh, raising a host. Oh, one of our generals of these clans. Uh, no? Yes? No? Oh, he's the general of the first warband. Oh, really? So, it would gain some light infantry, but these aren't... Oh, they're loyal, but... Can I split you off? You're too powerful. Okay, the loyal ones will stay. These guys haven't become loyal yet, so I'm gonna split them off. Uh, it does say they'd be loyal to someone, which is weird. Sure, he can gain some more troops. It might become dangerous, we will see. Let me get another general in here for that army. A little scary. It's nice to get free troops. Uh, right now, we have a cheap move slave cost. Yeah, no, we can definitely get rid of that. I'm not interested in keeping that around. What are you doing here? Ghost! <laughs> Wait, I've gone for five minutes and Quill's in another war. Best stream. Some things just don't change. War. War never changes. Or so I've heard. I'm getting a fair amount of attrition here. What I'm gonna do, the guys who are actually part of my, um, actually, you go here. Um, you go here. Um, the guys that are part of my actual manpower pool, I'm gonna move out of here so it doesn't cost us manpower to siege these guys out. Uh, they're considering an attack, but then we'll just reinforce like crazy. There's a lot of troops over here, admittedly. Are they actually moving in? Okay, we're not gonna hesitate here. We're gonna we're gonna move in as quick as we can. There we go. Yeah, they're gonna attack. We're gonna have the forest bonus. They are coming with a lot of dudes. You and you, in case we need you. So numbers disadvantage at first. There we go. Our reinforcements come in first, which is good. Now theirs. We're kind of even. We have the morale lead. But we have more reinforcements coming in. 
They're just gonna get smushed. That's the biggest battle we've seen in this game, though. That's a lot of people in this era. This is a war that, like, would be talked about in the historical records for a long time. Done. The Battle of Glebum. We are going to grab everyone. I'm going to deselect you and move everyone out of here. So we can continue the siege with troops from one of the clans. It's totally peaceful with saving these people. Yep, that's right. That's us. They'll greet us as liberators. Where have I heard that before? Uh, we'll grab some of you, move you here. We'll grab you, move you here. Just try to reduce some of the attrition. I might, maybe I should just automate these guys, but I'm worried. Well, actually, I don't think they can go up here, can they? No. I'll tell you to take independent actions. You're going to reinforce over here, which is a little bit odd, but... Do, 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 do. <sighs> really need one of these guys to open the borders. Man. So we're not going to be able to smack those guys. I mean, which I think is going to be fine in the end. Yeah, no, this like one army. I. I I have no idea what's going on. It's exiled, which is why I'm not fighting it. Okay, so it's an army that, like, doesn't have any manpower, and it's currently in exiled status because it can't reach friendly territory. All right, that's fine. Let's go up to speed five, finish this siege. The thing, you can play the game a lot more in siege five with a little bit of automated dudes. These guys are standing here despite being automated. Like, no, no, we'll get attrition. But they are ready to reinforce, which is actually good. That's, that's what I tend to do, is be ready. My leader! Wait. This is me. I uh, sent word he's fallen ill. Perhaps if he's wealthy enough, he will seek treatment. I'm going to gain Mentagra. Wait, what? Is this an illness? Oh! Mysterious disease thought to have been spread by kissing and bodily contact displayed a facial rash with sores and severe discomfort. What is that, like, have herpes or something? What is this? Yeah, it sounded like a territory, which is why, like, this, this, I think this dialogue box is glitched. No, no, no. It's just, I don't know what Mentagra is. Cooties, I've got cooties. All right, we got some popularity. We've gone and beaten them up. And now we're gonna automatic stomp on the rest of these guys. Oh yeah, if I have money, I can seek treatment. So, there you go. 100 gold, I think. Oh no, it's gonna use the country's money. Right, because I am the country. Content in life. Um, there's a place to find out. My current heir would be Sinatis Bolgius, who's got fairly decent stats. Ah, uh, let's seek treatment. Let's do it, you guys. Automated troops, shuffling bound. Boom, 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 victorious, done. But we're still not going to be able to go over here. See, this is what we get for not being friendly. No border access. And it looks like it's not mutual, because I think some of them might be moving. I guess not. If they have border access, I'm willing to bet this guy would go somewhere friendly. It's going to be captured. So we're getting the war, goal, war score now, because we do have the war goal. We could just declare war on these guys. That's true. Like, these little guys here. They have one ally. Which is the guy we're already at war with, right? No, it's not. But that's fine. Fabricate claims. Just so that we don't lose some st some stability. We're going to war on this, which will bring these guys in, which is fine. And we'll just swallow all that up. Best way to get military access is just to clear the land yours. There you go. Well, that's what we're going to do. Do you have 16k here? And a level 2 fort? Wow, you are playing tall. All right, let's get everyone in position up over here. 
to be ready to move against a 16k stack with a level 10 leader. They're not messing around. Um, we got a land dispute. Local taxes. I don't know. Go for the taxes route. Your heir is 71 years old. Yeah. It's not an heir. It's like the leader of one of the other clans as well, right? So it's like, I don't know, going to take turns or something? I'm not sure. Boom. All right. We've got critical mass. Declare war. Go. Oh, the other country is going to become the war leader, I guess, because they're much bigger. Or maybe guarantees or whatever. I don't know. Things. Charge! At least these are planes. It's going to be nice and flat. Easy to fight in. The level 2 fort's going to be a huge pain in the ass. Excellent. Um, so what we're going to do is we will tell everyone to go independent operations. Yeah, but as I say, we've got to make sure... We're going to have to make sure we have at least... 10k troops here. So these two, I'm just going to go and set them to manual and tell them to stay here. The rest can wander around and do whatever they can do. Oh, these guys got pulled in too. I didn't realize that. Oh, well, shoot. Great. Excellent. Uh, I mean, it's a little scary. I'm not going to lie. On the other hand... Uh, yeah, go there. That's fine. Um, oh, that's level two, so you're still going to need more dudes as well. There, do this. On the other hand, we could take lots of territory. It's okay. We'll just have another civil war, you guys. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, we'd lose some happiness but gain money. Let's decline Alright, there you go. Now you can siege this. Oh, you attrition so much. Shoot, you can't siege that anymore. We should finish one war. I can't reach that. Okay. Um, come back over here. You join in there. I love these one more round things. Yeah, I know. Just, it's, and for me, it's just, it's just one more war. That's all. Just one more war. They're sieging some stuff. They're not sieging the fort, so it doesn't matter. Grab that, although we don't have much extra. Throw some more troops in here. Oh, yeah. I focus mostly on the clan ones to do it. Because, again, their manpower pool is different than mine. Alright, keep that going. Freaking level 2 fort. Yeah, I've been out of manpower for a long time. We started this war with basically no manpower. It's like, this is fine. Uh, if you want to go and attack there with your 7k versus my 13, that's fine. Right, I'll do a little something like this. We won't need it, but just in case it comes in and helps and just generates a little bit of more better killing. We actually lost quite a bit more here. 4,000 of our troops were killed. We only killed 2,600 of theirs. Something something pirate victory. I'm going to select you. Uh, what we should do is... Consolidate. Can I do that in bulk over here? No. Although, uh, the first, second, third warband, I'm going to merge you guys up, and then tell you to consolidate your cohorts. There we go. Because we don't have the manpower to regenerate you anyway. Now, the ones who are loyal to different people and things won't merge up, or there's weird stuff. Like, these guys won't merge up for some reason. Inspired, more discipline, loyalty gain... Yeah, I don't want to lose loyalty right now. We're going to need some loyal generals for what's about to come. We're sieging some stuff over here, but that's okay. We really have to get this level 2 fort. Because then what we can do is we can move into this part, which is our first war. Siege this area out, finish the first war, and then just focus on the second one. Hire some mercs? Yeah, that's a good point. Cost this... Costs us money. It's quite a bit. Right, right. You don't you don't pay anything to hire them. You pay them monthly, and then you pay them to disband. You pay them to go away. Which is kind of awesome. Uh, more omen. 
we're going to go for the manpower. White piece imminent. Except not, because the war goal is being contested. I guess it has been going on for a little while. They survive, we pay them to disband. Otherwise, they decide to go after us or something. There's, there's something like that. Uh, they might be grouping up a little too much for us to take them here. I mean, they're not starting to siege it, which is good. At some point they will. They still have the river crossing. We might not want to attack from this angle. Yeah, it figures this would go badly. And I can't disagree with that. Yeah, why don't you just go and siege this? We're actually, we're running, we're getting attrition so hard over here, we're gonna run out of enough troops to continue the siege. Oh, is this a level 2 fort as well? Because this is not being sieged. Oh, for crying out loud. We are just gonna have to end this a little sooner than we'd like. Uh, whoops. You are pathing in a bad way that's gonna get you killed. <sighs> Can't you buy manpower? I don't think so. The most they could do is maybe buy buildings. Oh! Petitioner! Folk of vision in the near future is found by his loved one hanged by brigands. He'll give you money or oratory power. Uh, in this case, I will take the money. Okay, we're not actually going to catch those guys. There we go. Greens in the plains. Where were we defeated? Oh, probably a, ge a, a generic, like, clan group over there or something. I need 10 war score against these guys. We're back up to 5 over there. Oh, stack wipe! Well, that was interesting. Uh, we don't actually need to, to siege this. Yeah, we are getting our ass kicked in over there, though. Um, maybe this war is actually going to end up badly. Maybe we should just white peace with these guys. After all. Oh! Wait, they rejected? Seriously? Whoa! Uh -oh. Manpower. Yeah, manpower is a lot slower. So we we went to the war just to make it exciting at the end of the stream here, but I think uh, we might get we might get punished a fair bit for it. This is what I get. I'm like, ah, oh, we'll just go for, you know, one more war, squeeze it in, keep everyone happy. Yeah, might have been bad. Let's just bop these guys again. We're almost at 10 over here. So we offered them a white piece. They said no. So now we might actually just make demands. And now we're down to six. Wait, what? What's going on with the war score in that war? Keep coming. There we are. And they're gonna reinforce, maybe, but there we go. Victorious, and they're still coming. They're gonna cross a river to attack us. Minus 69, you guys. Oh, we have war exhaustion. 
go. Bring that down. We've got no men left. Uh oh, now the reinforcements. Well, I think this is going to be the end of the stream, you guys. May have expanded a little too quick. Like, I like how we just... The first war was kind of YOLO, and then the second war was like, but we need access rights. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so if we were offering peace, what would you suggest? You want all of that. Well, they're pretty sure they're winning, and you know what? They're kind of right, since we have no troops anymore. <laughs> oh, folks, we're going to wrap it up. There's going to be another live stream tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. Uh, we're going to be streaming at noon. Um, tomorrow is 420, so it kind of feels like tomorrow we're probably going to try to play as Kush. <laughs> Kush for the 420. If we hadn't just YOLO'd here, but it's important to know how far you can push it. If we hadn't YOLO'd, like, we were in great position. But, like, I, when I said after we finished the war and, at the Civil War, and I was like, we should just sit here, rebuild the nation, actually get some manpower... That would have been correct. But I was like, but it's boring for the stream. The correct thing would have been to do, just sit here and wait, not necessarily max out of manpower, but maybe get to 10,000 manpower, you know, halfway up again. And, but but who wants to just sit around, you know? Exactly. Uh, for tomorrow, I don't know. Ooh, maybe, yeah, I don't know what the multiplayer will be. We could, we haven't done Team Fortress in a long time. Wouldn't surprise me if it was just more auto chest, or maybe we just do four hours of freaking Imperator, I'm not sure. But yeah, we might we might try Kush and see how it goes for 420. Folks, thank you very much for coming out. Thanks to everyone who subbed and resubbed. All the people contributed to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund. Thank you so much. A hey, Private Paul, hey, with the 46 months. Lots of you guys. And yeah, the 18 remunts from Belvala. That was awesome. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. I know there's a bunch of names in here. I'm going to try to get them tomorrow. I've got to wrap this up right now, though. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.